Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Football Stooges. This is our week seven, eight podcast. Getting into the nitty gritty of the football season. A lot to talk about this week. A lot of big things happening both during Sunday and also today as well. A lot of big news around the league. Multiple different aspects. We're going to dive right into it. But without further ado, let me introduce my colleague today. The one and only Eagles fan who is still getting more psyched every week, just readying himself for that massive disappointment when they lose in the wild card in the divisional round. Mastodon. Boom! <laughs> and he's already started with the Yingling. All right. And off a Bears win. Surprised to hear that, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Mamba. Surprise? Surprise. Fuck them Patriots. <laughs> Fuck them. No Yo. one back. No one betted in on the... in fucking Gillette. I in think Gillette that was the too. first time the Bears ever won in Gillette. If it rains, the Bears win. What? If it yeah, rains, the Bears win. Bears win. <laughs> if it rains, Let's the Bears win. Go, first dude. week of fucking monsoon. This oh week. Oh my god. Yeah. All right. Anyway, let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. Um, we'll start with the Thursday night game: Saints and Cardinals. All righty. Saints going in to play the Cardinals. They end up losing 42-34. to Andy Dalton uh, still being the main quarterback, even with Jameis Winston. Um, still not 100% back, but, like, could have played, but they kept Andy in. He did pretty good, though he threw three interceptions. One or two of them weren't really his fault. Still an INT, though, and most of them returned for pick sixes. Not a great night for him. Kyler Murray went 20 for 29. Um, 204 yards. Um with a 7.0 average, one TD, and no interceptions. Biggest thing people want to talk about is that big fight that Kyler Murray and uh, his coach Cliff. Um, oh, I Cliff. Saw that. Is it Kingsbury, Kingsbury. right? Yeah, Kingsbury. Kingsbury. I, 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 I was going to say something different. I don't know why. But Cliff Kingsbury had a huge fight. They were yelling at each other. Kyler Murray really yelled at him to calm the fuck down. Um, yeah. Uh, looks like there is trouble brewing between the coach and the quarterback, which you never want to see as a fan of the Arizona Cardinals, but it doesn't look good thus far. We talked last week about possible um, a trade that we had heard, or at least I had heard from the Colin Cowherd show, trading Kyler for Russ um, would work on paper, but we'll see, have to see how you know, that progresses. But anyway, again, the Cardinals coming in and still getting the win, regardless of some of the off-field or just off-the-field issues. Yeah, I mean... Murray trying to, <laughs> Kyle Murray trying to tell Cliff that he wants to play the COD campaign now. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I think there's there's got to be some staffing issue going on because there's no reason why your freaking quarterback that you paid a shit ton of money right before the season started are we yelling at your coaching staff? So something yeah. something's not right. Something's wrong. But um, um yeah, Robbie called it defense. I call it defensive game that looked like offense because yeah. of those pick six. It's the the pick Saints six. defense. I mean, Arizona really, you know, was. I mean, Arizona was running ball pretty well. Like, uh, anyway, Benjamin got ninety-two yards off twelve carries. Yep, not bad running uh, from the Cardinals. Using a run, run first team at all. Um, I was surprised again. Obviously, at the Arizona defense doing really well. Buda Baker really leading the defense. Um, from that position, even after they lost Chris Jones, um, they're still been able to. Uh, like pressure the quarterback a lot, which I'm really surprised by after losing their one of their best pass rushers. I don't I don't know if JJ Watt is still on that level. Um but uh the receiving for Arizona was odd. Um DeAndre Hopkins again coming back, hundred and three yards was great. Robbie Anderson who just came on the team had one target, no receptions, no yards, a little odd. Uh Ertz did well and also Rondale Moore and Ingram squished, uh, squeezed in there. Um, New Orleans receiving was good. Kamara and Alave obviously on there. Um, Alave leading with 106, um, but not able to get a ton of passes. Otherwise, um, it was a really rough night for Dalton that the Arizona Cardinals defense I mean, really won them that pass- game. Yeah, those passes were going to Arizona's defense. So Yeah. Uh, Isaiah Simmons, Marco Wilson, and Antonio Hamilton all had um, one interception per um, and two of them were pick sixes. So that really hurt the Saints, and ultimately it's what caused them to lose, I think. Um, otherwise, it was mm. a decent, a decently good game. Um, but, yeah, I think the biggest issue everyone's talking about, Kyler and Cliff, there's something wrong, something really wrong. You never want to see your head coach and your quarterback fighting, especially in a team like Arizona where a lot of people were saying they have a potential to make a deep playoff run if things go right for them. 
Oh, so yeah. they're adding pieces. They've done well. They have like a really good tight end. They have a good receiving core. Their running backs seem to be doing well. Their line is holding. And now it's just up to Kyler. Um, and it looks like things are going south. I mean, they they should be running first in the pack for the NFC West, but they're right now sitting at the bottom, right next to San Francisco. So yeah, not but sure. Again, yeah, I mean, it's still that four three. I <laughs> know. I mean, it's still Seattle. I mean, Arizona should be ahead of Seattle. I don't know why the Rams are th- like that high. I feel like the Rams are. I feel like the Rams haven't won a game this year. They honestly, have, they had a bye week already. No. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So like. Didn't they uh, beat one of the teams, so that's why they're higher? Oh, no, they're 3-3. Three and three. That's why. Oh, it's... Did you, uh, off of one of Andy Dalton's uh, interceptions, you see the frickin', uh one yeah, of the, the slow quarterbacks which is frickin' oh my God. forward. <laughs> uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, nothing much else with this game. No, not Defense, much. it looks like no fits. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Moving on, first game. Um, let's talk about it. As a Bengals fan, I love this game. <laughs> the Bengals in Cincinnati at the jungle beat the Ravens 35-17, and it was not that close, to be quite honest. Um, Falcons Ravens. had a couple. Key, Falcons. <laughs> or, yeah, I wish it was Ravens. Falcons, um, Falcons scored 17. 17 of those points came in the second quarter where there's a couple key mistakes the Bengals made that they really cleared up on. So for three whole quarters, the Bengals played amazing football. Mariota came out for the Falcons, 8 for 13 with one uh, touchdown, no interceptions, but sacked three times. Burrow, 34 for 42 for 481 yards with an 11.5 average, three touchdowns, no picks, only taking three sacks. Um, Cincinnati rushing was still a little odd. It's still weird to see Joe, uh, Joe Mixon run for 58 yards on 17 carries for a 3.4 average. So something's got to change there. But again, they are a pass first team. You'd just like to see Joe Mixon get a couple more average yards. Um, but then the, the, the receiving is ridiculous. Tyler Boyd, eight receptions, 155 yards, one TD. Jamar Chase, eight receptions, 130 yards, two TDs. T. Higgins, five receptions, 93 yards. And then Hayden Hurst, six receptions, 48 yards. Um the well, highest a lot of for, weapons, so. yeah the highest for the Atlanta Falcons was Demary Bird with 70, 75 yards and right behind him was Olamande Zacchaeus who with uh <laughs> <laughs> 31 yards on three receptions um Kyle Pitts and Drake London really shut down by that Bengals defense I know it was Awuje that was guarding Pitts all day long he only had three receptions for nine yards on five targets the um, thing about Atlanta is they really are not slinging the ball at all with Marietta. And even, like, running-wise, they didn't do much. So I mean, I don't they don't have much to throw to. Kyle Pitts is getting doubled every game. Um, Drake London's all right. I mean, He's doing good. But against a team like the Bengals that have a pretty good cornerback setup, they're going to struggle, and they did. Um, they tried to run the ball a lot. They only had five yard, 50 yards for Tyler Aguilar. Uh, Mariota then rushing for 31 himself when um, the protection broke down. Um, yeah. Yeah. I really like here as a Bengals fan seeing Akeem Davis Gaither, one of our outside linebackers that had to be pulled into the middle linebacker slot, um, do well. Uh, Logan Wilson was out this game. Um, we're also still missing DJ Reader. That's why the Saints were able to run all over us um, last week. Um, but I'm glad that he really stepped up, um, as well as Jermaine Pratt really filling in for Logan Wilson, who I will continue to say is one of the best middle linebackers in the game right now. Um, Hendrickson and Hubbard creating a lot of pressure. Uh, we also had, I think we had, um, we didn't have an interception, but I remember Bates had a couple passes defended. And otherwise, it was just a dominant dominant performance from the Bengals. A couple defensive mishaps that they had in the second, but that was really it. Not for much else you can really pull out at this point. Cincinnati is finally looking like they're hitting stride. Um, I think they're, does it say who they're playing next? I think they're going up, we'll, we'll cover it, but I believe, they're, I believe they had yeah. Monday Night Football against the... The um, Browns. Browns, yep. Monday night it on... Was- on Halloween against the Browns. Yep. What, yeah. what I have to say about that game, it was the Burrow Chase show. That's oh, yeah. basically what it was. Burrow had like over 200 yards in the first quarter. That's insane. He, he had a couple of these games last season where he threw for like over 400, and it was against the Ravens too, which has yeah. a good defense, even though that year they were a lot more injured. But still, like throwing for 481 yards in the NFL is not an easy task for anyone. Yeah. What, he only took what three sacks? Not, not yeah. too terrible. So. Still, Lyle Collins was on his ass every play. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't. I don't fucking get it. We spend all that money to get him from Dallas, and the guy is on his ass more than 
A fucking crawling baby. All right. Dak's back. Yep, Dak is back. Detroit Lions coming into the Cowboys' home and losing 6-24. to Jared Goff, 21 for 26, 228 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions, and five sacks. Dak Prescott, 19 for 25 for 207, one touchdown, no picks, only taking two sacks. Um, Detroit didn't really run the ball that well. Jamal Williams only had 79 yards, while Tony Pollard had 83 and Ezekiel Elliott had 15, both of them having about 13 carries. Um, then, as far as receiving, not a lot of numbers jump out. To feel, uh, or Khalif Raymond, excuse me, had 75 yards. Brock Wright had 74, and TJ Hawkinson had 48 for Detroit. Um, St. Brown was not a factor. One target, one catch, four yards. Um, C.D. Lamb for Dallas had four receptions for 70 yards. Noah Brown had five for 50. Dolphin Schultz, five for 49. And Pollard out of the backfield, two for 26. So not a lot of stuff jumps out of you here. It was a really, it was a bad game. Um, it yeah, was a I bad mean... game. It was basically Prescott just warming up to the flow of the game after being injured for, what, six weeks? Seven yeah, weeks, about five weeks. Something like that. So, I mean, it's kind of good they selected this game to uh, come back to uh, for Dak because, I mean, Detroit's defense is pretty much a trash can. So, Abysmal, um, yeah. Yeah. What's, what's weird, though, is that Detroit was holding them for a while, even with all the fumbles that the, they gave up. And like in the, the first quarter, takeaways. yeah. Yeah, they, uh, like, the score is very misleading. Detroit tried to hold them until the end. Yeah. And it was oh, at the game. half. Also, at the half, Detroit was leading 6 3, which is a terrible yeah, score, yeah. I mean, but still, they were leading. That could also just be Dak just, you know, not, just needing to adjust. In terms of the NFC yeah. East, that is pretty competitive. Holy shit. Very competitive. NFC Beast is what it is this year. Philadelphia 6 and 0, New York 6 and 1, Dallas 5 and 2, and then the Washington Commanders 3 and 4. Um as well as NFC North, it looks like Chicago's um doing obviously better and Detroit seems it's already out of the race for anything good at all besides a draft pick. Um <laughs> which is kind of disappointing for Detroit. Um they'll figure but, it out eventually. Yeah. A bright spot <laughs> is Jeff Okuda with 12 solo tackles, 15 of them in total. Um, and then Leighton Vander Esch looks very good. Again, a really good, um, solid linebacker that's been on the Cowboys for a while now. Um, but yeah, He's healthy. Again, when he's healthy, yes. Um, he's a healthy a lot more than Sean Lee was. But again, he's still a very good, very good player. Um, but again, yeah. so many people on the, the Cowboys, they're wearing these new helmets that have like the face shield built into the helmet, and so they don't have this top bar right over your eyebrows where the face yeah. mask rests. It looks so weird. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. But anyway, yeah. Lions lose in Dallas 6-24. to Alright. Looking up next here. Titans and the Colts. Yeah, I believe oh it's boy, AFC what South. a game! Yep, AFC South matchup. So, I got another so, weird game. Um, but we have a lot of off the talk about the Colts, Colts going into Tennessee, yeah. losing ten to nineteen. We got a lot to talk about, especially Matt Ryan. Yeah. This might mm. be, this could have been Matt Ryan's last football game. Just oh full yeah. stop. Like oh, there is yeah. a high chance that it is. Matt Ryan, thirty three for forty four, two hundred forty three yards with one touchdown, and two sacks. Not terrible. But Ryan Tannehill, thirteen for twenty one, thirty two, a six yard average with two sacks. Jonathan Taylor only ran for 58 yards on 10 carries. Derrick Henry, 128 yards on 30 carries, so really establishing his dominance. Um, Indianapolis had its receiving core kind of slowed. Paris Campbell had 70 yards. Michael Pittman had 58. Naheem Hines, 41. And then Alec Pierce, 37. Tennessee, Austin Hooper had 56 yards. Cody Holster at 32. Robert Woods at 26. And Derrick Henry had 10. So again, it seems like it's a lot of the Derrick Henry show. Um, and it's working, even with the Tennessee line being a little banged up, especially with Lawan out. Um, and Look then, at how many carries. Holy shit. Derrick Henry, yeah. 30 carries? 30 carries. That is a workhorse oh. number of carries right there. Jonathan Taylor, yeah. who's also a really good running back, still coming back from injury, only had 10 carries. Derrick Henry had 30. That's three times the amount of carries for Derrick Henry, um, yeah. which is just ridiculous. I would not say this is Matt Ryan's last game. A team is going to be desperate to try to pick him up. That is true. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I've been saying, I, I even said this earlier, I don't understand why the Colts went out of their way to get Mike Ryan. Now, I think the ownership 
and GMs are out there. Well, probably GMs on the hot seat. But um, Colts ownership looks like now they're realizing, like, okay, we're not. We need to, yeah, either start tanking and you know get draft picks, rebuild, or do something. But yeah, I, I mean, I was saying Matt Ryan's not the answer right now for the Colts. Yeah. So if the Colts miss the playoffs, you think Frank Reich and I, Ballard, the GM, is gone? Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Well, the owner of the Colts is really. Oh, what's his name? I can't remember his I'm name. Saying. Yeah, Jim Irsay. Jim Irsay is always about win, 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 which in some situations is great. You want that from an owner. As a Bengals fan, I remember having Paul Brown as the owner and <laughs> GM, and he was just like, you know, I don't want to pay anybody anything, and we were scraping by, like, please, we have Carson Palmer and Ocho Cinco and a good defense, let's do something. And then it was just, nah, nah, nah. It's like, oh, my God. And Yeah, we can sign Terrell Owens, who's like 85. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, so, but having a, you know, an owner that's like, let's spend money, let's go out, let's do it. But, like, you got to be smart with it. Again, to Mamba's point, why are you signing Matt Ryan, who is in old past, past his prime with a O-line that looked good on paper, but so far has been bad. And Matt Ryan can't take hits. He never could. So, I don't understand why this is happening. Now they're going to be going with their backup quarterback. So, there's a lot of issues rolling up. So, I, I wonder what direction they're going. Are they going to try to trade Matt Ryan? If so, who's taking Matt Ryan? Who needs a quarterback that badly? Um, or just Matt he, Ryan's calling it a day. Matt Ryan, I mean, his contract's pretty big. He might just call it a day. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Which is rough. Yeah. They have to pay him, so. They do. <laughs> yeah, that's dead they cap do, right there. Mm-hmm. Did he have a guaranteed deal or no? Does anyone know? I think everyone get basically gets guaranteed deal no matter what. Yeah, he has some money guaranteed. Okay. Um, but, like, I mean, how old is even Matt Ryan? Matty Ice. <laughs> Status out. Yeah, benched. Um, yeah. yeah, 37. So, yeah, Sam Ellinger. Shame. Yeah. I wonder, but who who, does he, who would he get traded to if he got traded? Who do you think would want Matt Ryan at this point? I honestly can't think of anyone that would want him. <laughs> I'm honest. Washington. <laughs> But why bring Wentz? Bring Wentz back to Indianapolis? Oh God! <laughs> no, they just get rid of Wentz. No, um, but even then, that's not going to solve anything for the Commanders. I, I know, but it's, Dan, it's like, Dan Snyder. It's Dan Snyder. I mean, I rather take Heineke over a bum ass Matt Ryan that's out of his prime. And okay, Dude, I mean, and he, he he wants to start. That's the problem. Trade Matt Ryan for Andy uh, Dalton. But they got Jameis Winston. I mean, do you? I mean, so, is it, how how long is he out for? Injuries. Oh, probably a couple more weeks. It's it's pretty yeah. bad. It's not just a back. It was like a, a leg injury, if I saw correctly. Yeah, he got injured bad. like last season, didn't he? And he end this season. Head. He's got a big enough contract you could trade for Rodgers, but I doubt that's going to happen. That's not going to happen. No, they just, no. I mean, Packers shelled out way too much money for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. As a Bears fan myself, I could say that. <laughs> trading, for, trading for Derek Carr. Raiders are going down, looks like. But that'd be way too early for Derek Carr. And that's if Josh McDaniels stay, if he's not gone. Even then, I don't, I don't know I'm if they take Matt Ryan. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know who I, would take Matt Ryan. I, I'm being serious here. No one wants would want Matt Ryan. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the CFL. <laughs> like he's going to Canada. Like, okay. I was kind of joking. Why but I be so see... pissed off and just go through 800 yards in a single game? <laughs> in, in XFL or UFL? What's, you know what? What's funny is he had a great game last week. Yeah. This game wasn't terrible. Only like two picks is like... not great, but also 33 for 44 is not bad. But also, I think they're they're relying too heavily on Matt Ryan. I know Jonathan Taylor wasn't 100% back, but like 10 carries to Derek, to Derek Henry's 30. Like, holy shit. Like, give Jonathan Taylor something. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a Frank Reich effect on the Doug Peterson effect, on the Andy Reid effect. Don't run, they don't like to run the ball. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Run the damn ball. It's, if you have a running game, run the ball. It doesn't make any sense not to run the ball. Talking about running the damn ball, look at the Packers. Yeah. How about a damn Packers? <laughs> fuck, eight carries and four carries or eight? What the fuck? Oh, my yeah. God. When I, Another, saw, when I saw this, oh, my God. Go, go ahead, it, go ahead. No, no, go, go, go. All right. Um, the Packers going into 
the shittiest stadium in the world, Washington Commanders FedEx Field. Um, Aaron Rodgers, well, Packers lost the game by two, 21 to 23. Aaron Rodgers threw for 23 for 35 for 194, two touchdowns, no picks, and no sacks. Taylor Heineke, 20 for 33, 201 yards, a six yard average, two tees, one pick, and one sack. Um, the big difference you see here is the style of play in the offenses. Aaron Jones had eight carries for 23 yards. A.J. Dillon had four carries for 15. Those together is 12 carries. Brian Robinson <laughs> Jr., who I believe was the man, was he the one that was shot three yeah, times in his he's, leg? He's, yeah, he was the one that Man, was he was shot. just shot three times in his leg, who has now just recovered, had 20 carries for 73 yards. The Packers have an amazing backfield of Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. They don't run a lot because they say, we have Aaron Rodgers, we got to pass the ball. If you set up the run game, it sets up the passing game. But I think the biggest issue with this was is that the interior D-line for Washington was really good. Jonathan Allen is a monster. And he really shut down that some of that interior run because when the Packers run, it's literally just a halfback dive, which is such bullshit. Like, pull a fucking guard, crack down a tight end, throw in a fullback, get your hands dirty, touch the <laughs> ground, and fucking play some good old football. Vince Lombardi right now is fucking screaming in his grave. Forget rolling around. He's doing a damn somersault. This team, <laughs> this Packers team is soft. It is so focused on the future of the NFL or the, the modern NFL game, right? That they're passing an insane amount. Their top receiver at 55 yards. Terry McLaurin at 73. You have no one to throw the ball to. Why aren't you running the ball more? I don't care if you have Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, or Tom Brady. If you can run the football well, run the football well. You have a good O-line and you've got good running backs. Big running backs too. Running backs that can run even, through a motherfucker. Run the ball. And then Rodgers hasn't even been throwing the ball that well. No, and if he's not doing good, why keep going to him? He can't so, he can't because, throw to nobody. He has Alan Lazard. Like your second highest receiver was Aaron Jones, who was a <laughs> he was a run first running back who played out of his mind receiving the ball. It's Alan Lazard, and then you have Sammy Watkins, Robert Tunyon, and Amari Rogers. They were only like twenty three completed passes. Yeah. I don't probably probably letting Devontae Adam go was a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, he left. You know regardless. what's also? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. You know, you know what's the problem too? Aaron Rodgers is calling his own plays. It's a big Ben situation from the Steelers last oh, year. Oh, he is. Yeah. There's there's talk that he is basically calling his own plays. That's why okay, he's throwing that's the ball more. So stupid. I mean, he can put the ball anywhere, but you have to have receivers that are going to be able to beat the coverage. And if the other team knows you're going to pass the ball a bunch of the time, they're just going to sit back and cover four. And they're going to be able to cover the entirety of the field. You're going to have to go with short shit. And if you throw two-yard passes every play, you're not going to get a first down. This is the same situation with Kyler Murray wanting to call his own plays. And I think uh, whoever the fucking coach's name well, is. Well, I would be fine with preseason. If, I would be fine with Rodgers calling his own plays if he had receivers that could make the routes that he called his yeah. own plays on. But the thing is, he doesn't have those receivers. If you were to swap like Rodgers and Joe Burrow... God forbid. Um, yeah, I think Rodgers would be going like to just throw the ball constantly. He's not gonna give it to right. his running back. So many people nowadays think you don't have to have a balanced attack on offense, but you should because if you set up the run game, you can throw in play action and you can really establish the passing game because those DBs are gonna cheat up. You get one fast receiver, he's gone. Um, yeah. So I don't understand. The Bills. Yeah. I think the Bills and Chiefs are that. <laughs> Well, even then, like, they aren't insane on the run, but they're all right. No. Um, but they still get it done. They're still not, you know, having their top runners 23 yards like the Packers do. Um, yeah. But, yeah, good games from Terry McLaurin, 73 yards, Curtis Samuel and Amari Rogers, 53 and 28, respectively. Then the Washington defense did a really good job um, on the inside, really shutting down a lot of those interior runs. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> A lot of interior runs, yeah, a lot of runs. So <laughs> also, yeah. hot, stupid, stupid hot take. Wentz last game since Wentz's Heineke, last last game in the league. Maybe for the, for the Commanders. I mean, I don't understand I, why you wouldn't I, go with Heineke. I mean, Heineke. How old is Heineke anyway? He's got to be young. He's young. Twenty five, twenty six. Oh, twenty nine. Oh, twenty nine. Maybe really? not that young. Really? Shit, he looks younger. Well, the thing is, he's been a backup for like 
pretty much forever. So. Yeah. But he's doing fine. I think we should continue to go yeah. with him. I think he's the, the way to go for it. T- Carson Wentz forces shit, and it's bad. Taylor Heineke. And he gets injured. Yeah, Taylor Heineke he seems injured, like he's yeah. a little bit more level-headed, so I think that's a good idea. Again, Washington Commanders winning by two at home, 21-23 to 23 against the Packers. Next up, a game that it shocked oh everybody. God. What the, the fuck happened here? If you were, if I were to throw this Brady line at you of what he did, I think you you think they would win. Tom Brady, uh, 32 for 49, 290 yards, a 5.9 average, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but only took one sack. You think they probably won that? 32 for 49, a lot of passing attempts, 290 yards, looks good. They didn't. They lost to Carolina in Carolina, three to 21. PJ Walker. Who? 16 for 22. XFL MVP. Yeah. 177 yards, an eight-yard average with two touchdowns, no picks, only taking one sack. Um, The big thing that stood out is Dante Foreman. Daonta? Is that how you pronounce that? D apostrophe O-N-T-A? Daonta? Yeah. Daonta? Dante Foreman. Who? Dante Foreman. Who? 15 (laughs) carries for 118. 15 for 118. That's a 7.9. Basically, eight-yard average on those runs. Right behind him, Chuba Hubbard, a great name, nine Chuba, for sixty-three Chuba. yard or Chuba Hubbard. It's it's Chuba Hubbard. I'm gonna say Chuba Hubbard. It sounds better. Chuba Hubbard, nine mm-hmm. for sixty-three for seventy or for a seven-yard average and one TD. So running all Ooh. over Tampa Bay. Um, Leonard Fournette had do, eight carries for nineteen yards. Playoff Lenny's I, looking bad. Do I pick up Dante Foreman in my fantasy team? Maybe because there's no Matt Rule. Yeah, Matt Rule's gone. RB1. Yeah. RB, uh, you lost Brees Hall, so and, might as well. That might be a yeah, good pickup, and yeah. The big thing I look at with Tampa Bay, offensive line injured, they can't get a run game. Tom mm-hmm. Brady hates the all O-line. I mean, it's it, either... It, oh, go for it, sorry. No, I was trying to make a joke. It's like, oh, you just wasted a marriage to go back to football to lose to the fucking Carolina Panthers. <laughs> I think he'll turn it around when he gets some guys healthy. Um, again, Mike Evans is scary. I don't know how he dropped that pass, but nine for 97 with a 10 yard average, um, had a great game. Uh, DJ Moore had 69 yards and seven receptions. Looks pretty good for the amount of, you know, only 16 receptions for the Carolinas, 32 for Tampa Bay. Tom Brady really spreading it around multiple, multiple receivers having at least one catch. Uh, Kyle Rudolph also hasn't been as great as they would want him to be. Again, he's no Gronk, but they still wanted him to pick up some of the stuff. So I think once, um, Chris Godwin gets going a little bit better. He's still kind of reeling from the injury. Once the O-line shorts itself back up and they get Julio back, I think Tampa Bay will be okay. Um, they're definitely in a panic mode right now, but it's not – the ship isn't sinking. Um, there definitely needs to be some fix. – there's some fixable things. Then again, if you look at their division standings, they're somehow on the top. Tampa Bay leading 3-4, and four, Atlanta right behind them 3-4, and four, Carolina 2-5, and five, New Orleans 2-5. and five. They're still winning their division, so they're okay. The NFC South is garbage. <laughs> it's probably the worst division it's, it's, in football right now. Oh, yeah. By the way, I'm, it's I'm that dropping... AFC South. Oh, yeah, AFC, dropping... oh, yeah, AFC South. Yeah. Oh, yeah, AFC South. Yeah. Houston's AFC. stuck, and that's an understatement. Titans can only run the football and play a bit of defense. Indianapolis, they were in that game with Denver, which was uh, just makes me hate them. Um, and then Jacksonville, who's been streaky. So, yeah, it's a competition between them two. I'd probably actually go with the AFC South because Tom Brady's in the NFC South. So, yeah. Carolina is, if Carolina wins you mean, you their mean next game. You mean North or South, sorry. You said AFC South. Yeah, no, he says AFC, AFC South. NFC. I would take yeah. the NFC South as a better uh, okay, division because okay, okay, Tom Brady's in yeah. the NFC South. Yeah. I would take that one as but, a better division. If Carolina wins this week, if they're playing and Tampa Bay and Atlanta loses, Carolina's leading the division. It's hilarious. Wow. By the way, Take I'm, division. Doing, I'm doing this right now. I don't need Dak anymore because I used him last week since Allen was on bye week. Dropping Dak for Deontay. Or da, de, Dante. Dante, Dante Foreman. Foreman. So yeah. I'm doing it. I'm locking or pick, it in. Or pick up Kenneth Walker the third. Holy shit. Um, oh, I, I picked I him up. Him. Oh, I, drafted, yeah. I drafted him. I drafted him because I knew, hey, look, like he probably is going to get some time, and he did good because I remember watching yeah, him. Someone already, somewhere he has him. All right. So 21-3, to three, again, Draft. Carolina winning at home in a surprising game. Also, interesting to see um, officials ran into the tunnel after the game and got a piece of something signed by Mike 
um, Evans. They're saying that it was it's not so a weird. signature. It was something weird, but it was weird to see regardless. Um, I think it's overblown with that one. Yeah. Somebody play New York, New York by Frank Sinatra because the Giants are 6-1, <laughs> and one. Ugh, which Mastin obviously doesn't like. <laughs> I have to admit that Dabble has him um, playing. Jesus Christ. Do you see Joe Judge or uh, Ben McDerp doing this? No. McDerp. No. <laughs> New York Giants going into Jacksonville, winning 23-17. to Daniel Jones throwing for 19 for 30, 202 yards, a 6.1 <laughs> average with one touchdown and only one sack. Yeah. Right. The rushing is insane. We'll get to that in Jesus a second. Christ. Trevor Lawrence, 22 for 43, a huge amount of passing attempts, 310 yards with a 7.2 average, but no touchdowns or interceptions. Um but here's the rushing. Saquon Barkley, 24 carries, 110 yards. Daniel Jones, 11 carries, 107 yards. Um, just oh, that's so over 300. much. Yeah. Over 300. But, I mean, I mean, Lawrence threw for 300, but still, what the fuck? Yeah. Between Daniel Jones' passing, Saquon's running, and Daniel Jones running. So between Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley, the combined yards... Um, we're over 400 because Saquon also caught for 25 yards. So it's over 400 oh yards my God. just between From those just two, two, two motherfuckers, two men. These guys are looking like just the two pillars of excellence for the Giants, um, especially in lieu of their loss of Evan Neal, their star tackle, who was had a PFF rating that was through the fucking roof, was looking like probably the offensive line of the year because offensive uh, linemen are never going to get fucking – offensive rookie of the year awards ever because no one cares about them sadly which is actually what, what what's kind of funny is people were like talking shit about daniel jones before and i was like oh this guy's not a quarterback like he's not our quarterback he's like you know not active. he's at least on a hot streak he's doing good and if he keeps this up he will be a good quarterback but he right now is on a hot streak and um I definitely think the, the one thing since we, we aren't getting any questions on our videos just yet, but if you're listening, go ahead and ask the question. We'll try to answer them as best we can. Um, I was going to do at the end of the day today, I want to rank the quarterbacks, both just how you think they are. And then we'll do another one where you rank them by speed. Cause honestly, I think Daniel Jones is top five in the league in fastest quarterbacks. Over Lamar. If he doesn't trip top. He's in the top five. He's not faster than Lamar. Okay, he's not okay, faster than Kyler, that. but I think he's okay. top five. I definitely think yeah. he's up there. So, um, but Jacksonville rushing 114 yards for Travis at Tyne Jr. Um, then Christian Kirk catching for 96, their top receiver. Evan Ingram for 67. Marvin Jones Jr., the old man, 57 yards for him. And then New York getting a ton of receptions from a lot of different people. 58 yards for Darius Slay. Wondell Robinson at 50. Saquon Barkley at 25. Chris Mack at 21. It was all yards for them. Doing very well spreading the ball around. Really like professional and solid play from Daniel Jones, really spreading the ball around. Um, but yeah, that fumble, that fumble loss by ETN, that was a sure touchdown, but he, T, ETN just fumbled it. Yeah. Oh he my fumbled. God. Again, the Giants have been winning key games at close games, but it's good to win close games. A win is a win in the win column. So they're doing good. They're sitting second in the NFC East, which is looking very, very good. They're only a game behind Philadelphia. Um, after Philadelphia was coming off a of bye week, they are six and zero. Oh. New York is six and one. Jacksonville is sitting at two and five, three out of four in the AFC South. Above them is the three and three Indianapolis Colts and the four and two Tennessee Titans. Um, but again, New York football. I'm talking about the Jets later. Is looking back, and I love it. Um, I love kind of the old school feel, the Giants and Jets. Um, and I like the dynamic duo of Jones and Barkley. They're looking great. Um, they're playing great. I'm glad they're doing good. I hope they stay healthy and I hope they do good because they're both phenomenal. I love watching them play. Um, and I think the Giants should go back to their old Phil Sims era look. Oh, yeah. I like it a lot better. Quick thing about Jacksonville, better. they traded James Robinson to the Jets. Yeah. People wondering, oh, why they trade James Robinson? He was not being used. Doug Pearson mm -hmm. wasn't using him. Urban Meyer hated him last year. So might as well let him go somewhere. And Jets yep. was perfect after losing Brees Hall. Exactly. We'll go <clears throat> too yeah. soon. Big big issues for the Giants football. Um at losing Evan Neal. And then also, I believe did they use Darius? Was it Darius Slayton that they lost? Who did they lose? They lost a receiver, I thought. Neal. Darius Tony, which no one no. Need, they don't use him. I forget, but they lost uh, one of their key receivers. Yeah, but Thibodeau was back, right? 
Yeah, Thibodeau's back. He's been back for a while. He's been doing good as well on the defensive end, really yeah. locking it down for him. All right, moving on from that game. Again, Giants winning 23-17 to in Jacksonville. Moving on to an AFC North battle, the hood of the NFL. Cleveland Browns going into Baltimore, 20-23, to dropping the game to the Ravens. <clears throat> um, Jacoby Brissett, 22 for 27 for 258, no touchdowns, no interceptions, and five sacks. Lamar Jackson, only nine for 16 with 120 yards and three sacks and only ran for 59 yards. A really unproductive day from Lamar, but in the end, they still get the win. Um, the big thing here is the Cleveland rush game was kind of shut down. Nick Chubb only had 91 yards on 16 carries. Kareem Hunt had four on five carries. Um, and then Baltimore's rush game was weird. Gus Edwards had 66 yards and 16 carries. Justice Hill had 26 yards and five carries. Again, this Baltimore offense is the most college-like offense we've seen. Mark Andrews getting a carry. Kenyon Drake getting 11 carries. Patrick Ricard getting a carry. A lot of sweeps, tight end dives, read options. A lot of weird things going on. The passing stats look really in favor of Cleveland. 74 yards for Amari Cooper. 71 for Donovan Peoples-Jones. 71 for David Njoku. And 16 for Nick Chubb. Baltimore, 42 for Devin DuVernay, 42 for Rashad Bateman, 20 for Patrick Ricard, and zero for Mark Andrews. But still, Baltimore coming out with the win. Really confusing win because on the stat sheet, it looks like Cleveland should have run away with this game, but it was the defense for Baltimore, their saving grace, that allowed them to really establish this win regardless of a terrible performance from the Baltimore offense. And guess what? The Browns miss a game or a game tying field goal again. Again, yeah. <laughs> It's their punishment Baltimore... for... Go ahead. Yeah. Baltimore defense is a blessing and a curse because they almost gave up a two, a 10-point, a double-digit lead again in the half, in the second half. Yep. It was rough. So, yeah. It was rough. And I'm, I'm glad to see that Baltimore has cracks as a Bengals fan. I still don't think they're that great. They just Lamar is just so amazing. He can overcome so many different things. But if you shut down Lamar, which happened here, they struggle especially against a Browns team, that that their defense is streaky. So, interesting game to talk about, but still 20-23, to Ravens winning the game. Jets and Broncos. Broncos, hey, Rick, what a game. (laughs) Yeah, Broncos not scoring a single touchdown. Um, Again. Yeah. 16-9 to was the score. Jets winning the game in Mile High Stadium. Um Russell Wilson out for this game. Brett Rippon in for him. 24 for 46, 225 yards, one interception, one sack. Zach Wilson, 16 for 26, 121 yards, four average. No touchdowns, no interceptions, but three sacks. Brees Hall ran for 72 yards um, and had one touchdown. Can we get a moment of silence for Brees Hall's ACL? Yeah. Thank you. Football well, gods, why? He, and it's so, so disappointing. Was it on the grass field or turf? <laughs> it's grass. Mile it's high. Mile grass. Grass. Yeah. yeah. He got hit. Yeah. He got hit in a weird way. And I think, yeah, he just tore it. Sucks, but he'll be back next year. Stronger than ever. We hope so. He was a really, really positive aspect and the key to this New York offense. I had him as like offensive rookie of the year, either him oh, or yeah. Oh, Damian yeah. Pierce. Oh yeah, he was he was tearing it up for a, the last couple of weeks. Honestly, the two rookies of the years both just tore their ACLs. Oh, who's the other one? Who were Evan Neal? Oh, Evan. Oh, Neal. oh, oh shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like honestly, that's not good. Last year, when we looked at the offensive rookie of the year, everyone said it was Jamar Chase, which I can't argue with, especially as a Bengals fan. But at the same time, you yeah. could have made a case for Creed Humphrey. The, or Jonathan yeah. Taylor. I think it was the whole... Um, Jonathan Taylor was yeah, a rookie I'm, last year? Yep. It was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But still. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. I, 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 Jonathan Taylor was only good the second half of the season. His first half of the season was kind of rough. I guess Jamar's was too, but Jamar was also just lighting up the scoreboard with a ton of stuff. Uh-huh. Um but you know, you're back. Creed Humphrey you know, I was. Think, uh, yeah. Plus, also, I think they kind of gave it to Chase because of playoffs. That, that's how oh, yeah. kind of voters go. Like, if you made a playoffs, then you're going to be Omek. And he also showed up in the playoffs. Yeah. Like, he wasn't just there. He showed up in the playoffs. Um, but regardless, Brees Hall out. Um, 
for the rest of the season with an ACL injury. Had a really good, really good start to his career, and hopefully that will continue um, as the Jets really needed him. Um, but again, they pull out the win 16 to 9 here. His one touchdown being the touchdown that the Jets used to propel themselves to the victory. Jerry Judy, 96 receiving yards. Corlin Sutland, 23. Greg Dulch, 51 receiving yards. Um, nothing really stands out to you. Only 45 yards for Michael Carter. The, excuse me. The top receiver for the Jets. A really weird game to look at, but the Jets are still trying to rebuild. Sauce Gardner looked amazing. Eight solo tackles, 10 in total. Again. Three passes defending. Looking like a phenomenal. Um, um, defensive, defensive rookie option. of the year. Yes. I mean, if Bryce Hall didn't get injured, you could have, if you, in the season ended that week, Sauce Gardner, yep. Bryce Hall, offensive, defensive rookie of the years. Like their draft class so far has looked phenomenal. Um, yeah. Now, offensive rookie Bre- of the year. I just, you know, I just saw it with Bryce Hall. I just saw it with Bryce Hall. He had four carries for those 72 yards. Mm hmm. Like four carries. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Michael Carter still had more yards. Or more carries, thirteen yard, yeah, thirteen carries, carries yeah. for twenty nine yards, yeah. Um, and then they picked up James Robinson to try help replace yep. Brees Hall. Like we said, they just I had him. Back. I had to, I had to make a transaction. But, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. New York looking good. Sadly, injuries now might slow them down. But again, beating beating the Broncos, who now are in deep shit because they said there were multiple rumors coming out saying that they are going to trade Melvin Gordon the third. Possibly even Russell Wilson and even um, who was there? Bradley Chubb. If they lose in London against the Jags this upcoming week, oh shit! Denver so they, are, they might be ready that, to just blow it up. Yeah, but Denver wants to eat that calf space for Russell Wilson. Bradley Chubb, okay. Melvin Gordon, yeah, you can get rid of him. But you, they want to take that dead cap of Russell Wilson after they signed just signed him a long extension deal. Yeah. Dude, that's gonna that's gonna hurt so much. It, it will. will. Pang Russ. I oh for me, God. it's get rid of Hackett. He's a hack right now. Yes. That's yeah. the big fix. Um Honestly, Russ take, will figure it well, out. I think it's something it might be staff like staff issue. I think he'll figure it out. I don't know if I really even want to cover this game because I don't know if I even want to talk about Texans football. Um Davis Mills, 28 for 41, 302 yards, a good spot for them. Uh, two t- two touchdowns, Mills. one interception. Yeah. Long neck Davis Mills out here. <laughs> Damon Price, 92 yards and 20 carries. Um, so not a, a good offensive day for the Texans, but their defense just could not stop um, the offense. Devontae Adams at eight receptions for 95 yards. Josh Jacobs, 20 carries for 143 yards. Derek Carr, 21 for 27 for 240 yards and a touchdown with only taking one sack. Hunter Renfro even getting 55 yards of receiving was a really good day for the Vegas Raiders. They really needed this win as they are now just above last in the AFC West behind Kansas City and the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, so it's I'm glad that the Va- Raiders' offense was able to get going, but their defense has got to be able to be better, which they are not good on paper. they got to figure out something because if they're going to win games in the AFC West, they have to be able to stop people, um, which they haven't been able to do much thus far. Um, Max Crosby is a diamond in the rough in this defense. Also, Chandler Jones looked like shit, and still has continued to look like shit, um, despite <laughs> them getting him yeah. in the offseason, which was uh, seems like a terrible move nowadays. But, I mean, I don't know what to cover with this. Raiders get a big win, 38-20. There's 38 really to 20. to talk about. If yeah, honest. it's the Texans, man. I don't know what the Texans... Like, if they were the Oilers, I think I'd like them. But, like, they're... <laughs> Because I like I like the Oilers uniforms. I like the Oilers style. I like the Oilers yeah. history. The Titans yeah, don't no, feel no. like the Oilers. I'm sorry. They don't. The Titans feel like... Oh. You know, Minneapolis Miracle and, you know, I think of like Frank Whitecheck when I think of the Titans. I don't think of, <laughs> you know, Warren Moon. I don't think of Earl yeah. Campbell. I don't think of Bruce Matthews, even though he was a Titan. Like, I think those are Oilers. And I think the Houston Texans should become the Oilers again. So Titans got to change their colors. This you know. game was a good old tank ball. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, this is, this is Warhammer. But um, Josh uh. Jacobs is basically the only good pick that the John Gruden and, and uh, whoever they had as Maycock had uh, as a GM. That's the only good pick they ever had during their tenure. And I'm glad Mike Mayock's with the Raiders because I hate him as an announcer. He's such a no, 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 Nancy no, no, no. He was, he was, he was the GM. Now he's been gone since last year. I think. Well, I'm, I'm not glad about. Yeah. I just don't want him in announcing. I hated him. 
so much. Yeah. He was such a negative Nancy. I, I just hated listening to him yeah. talk. Okay. But Josh Jacobs is basically their only good pick. Yeah. Josh Jacobs again, yeah, really coming forward for the tight or for sorry, not the Titans, the Raiders. The Raiders. Raiders, yeah. All right, getting to some of the later games. Seahawks Chargers. What is going on in Seattle? Thirty seven to twenty three Seahawks win in Los Angeles, which I mean Probably was more like playing in Seattle because no one goes to Los Angeles games that are fans of L.A. Geno Smith, 20 for 27, 210 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, two sacks. Justin Herbert, 33 for 51. 51 attempts on passing. Yikes. Um, Two TDs, one interception, three sacks. (laughs) Um, Big thing to look at this here. The disparity in rushing. Austin Eckler, nine carries, 31 yards. Justin Herbert, three carries, 22 yards. Sonny Mitchell, two carries, five yards. Isaiah Spiller, one carry, negative five yards. In total, Los Angeles Chargers had 15 carries for 53 yards. Kenneth Walker III, the rookie out of Michigan State, playing for Seattle, in by himself, had more carries, 23 to 15, and more yards, 167 to the Chargers, 53, by himself. The man ran for 167 yards with a 7.3 average with a long of 74 and having two TDs. He's not Marshawn Lynch, but God damn, that's the closest thing I've seen. He looks like a yeah. complete back, a complete back. He's yeah. running through people, around people, in between he's, people. He looks good. He's good. the full package. Yeah. So, yeah I think yeah, with Brees great. Hall now out and Ivan Neal now out, I think it's between Kenneth Walker the third and if Bailey Zabby doesn't play like shit in the second half, between them two for offensive rookie of the year. Um, well, no, no, no. Damian Pierce. Uh, I still think it's Ken. After that performance against the Chargers, it's Kenneth hmm. Walker. I think yeah. Kenneth Walker, like 167 yards. I know. People would be no, talking. No, I'm not, I'm not, people would be talking I'm, all day if Derrick Henry had 167 yards rushing. Yeah, this is Kenneth but Walker. I'm not putting. Uh, this is me not putting down Walker, but still having Pierce still in the conversation. Right. That's all I'm saying. Um, not that insane passing yards. Marquise Goodwin had 67. Will Disley had 45. Who? Tyler Lockett had 45. <laughs> DK Metcalf only having 12, but also going out with a lower extremity injury. Um, I don't think they've said what they've gone into thus far um but dk metcalf also injured in a turf issue which as some of you that are tuning in to the video can see um pete carroll was asked questions about the turf and grass debate and is heavily going towards making all nfl teams have grass instead of turf which in the modern day i think is a fucking easy option with how much money nfl teams have um well besides the texans and the commanders who are probably begging for change on the street corners um and Denver after Russell Wilson. But regardless, um, Los Angeles's pass attack looked good. Austin Eckler with 96 yards. Mike Williams with 86. Gerald Everett with 63. But again, not being able to get the job done and losing by 14 to the Seattle Seahawks. A very surprising victory for Seattle. And again... They're the top of the NFC West, which I don't know how. Arizona's at the bottom. I don't know how. San Francisco and Los Angeles are in the middle, and Seattle's at the top. But again, it's only four to three. Seattle's win loss, and three and three, three and four, and three and four for the other three teams in NFC West. So it's close, but still, if you had told me the Seattle Seahawks were leading the division, I would have said no fucking way. Yeah, I mean, Gino's having the best career of his life. Yeah, best season thus like, far. It's insane. Yeah, best season. Numbers That's weren't great at. this game, but it's not bad. It's, it helps win the game. And looks like everybody a thought better, see, yeah. better Russell Wilson. <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> I think Los Angeles might need to try to invest in a running attack because Austin Eckler's not that good in between the tackles. If they were to find a guy that can run between the tackles and have Austin Eckler be that kind of scat back, that short dump passes, which he's great at. I think they continue to do that well. Um, but this just keeps reaffirming my my um, stance that Justin Herbert is worse than Joe Burrow. Which not a lot of people want to get behind, but I am staying Uh-oh. there. Yeah. Uh-oh. Chiefs 49ers. This was the debut of Christian McCaffrey for the 49ers, um, but wasn't enough. Chiefs win 44-23 to on a... Um, a kind of a, a rough day for the San Francisco defense. Their offense looked all right, but their defense was not great. Um, Patrick Mahomes, 25 for 34 for 423 yards with a 12.4 average, three touchdowns, and one interception, only taking one sack. Jimmy G, 25 for 37, 303 yards with an 8.2 average, two touchdowns, and one pick, and five sacks. So 
that uh, Kansas City pass rush, which usually a lot of the times is an extra man. They're not, they blitz quite aggressively. Um, that San Francisco line not looking phenomenal, um, at least on the right side. That left side held in by Trent Williams was doing great, but again, they need to fix that right side of the line. Um, the rushing was interesting. Chris McCaffrey only had 38 yards of rushing, but he did have 24 yards of receiving, so not an insane day for him, but it is his first week of the team. He's got the playbook down. Jeff Wilson Jr. had 54 yards and seven carries. On the other side, the Chiefs rushing is shit again. Isaac Pacheo, 8 for 43, and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, 6 for 32 carries and yards, respectively. Um this is modern NFL. It is just passing. Juju Smith-Schuster, seven receptions for 124 yards. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, three receptions for 111 yards. Travis Kelsey, six receptions for 98 yards. Again, Travis Kelsey just restructured his contract. They're looking at trying to get Odell. I cannot fucking imagine having Odell on the Chiefs with this passing attack already. Oh I don't want. I don't want to imagine it. I. I, I hope to... to they have I, way uh, too many weapons. It's insane. Yeah. I think it's... I think the Packers need to be looking at Odell because they have no one to throw to, and if they make a, Lazard a second wide receiver option and Odell the first, yeah, that better. opens up yeah. a lot of things. Uh, but San Francisco, six receptions for 88 yards for George Kittle. Brandon Ayuk, seven receptions for 82 yards. Ray Ray McLeod the third, four for 65 and Debo Samuel, only five for 42. So a rough day for Debo, only having also one carry for two yards rushing. So they really shut down Debo, really forced a lot of things other places, and that ended up being a good victory for the Chiefs in that department. Um, Juju, yeah. Real quick, Juju Smith is finally kicking strides now. Yeah, he like was really slow day. in the very beginning, but yeah, now he's looking yeah. like a good receiver one. Yeah. But we got Patty Mahomes throwing the ball, just get open and he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll hit you. Yeah. One thing I'd say, this isn't the modern offense for a Chiefs. This is Andy Reid offense. <laughs> That's yeah. all I have to say about that one. This is yeah. Andy Reid offense. And, uh, high power, high flying. I know you guys picked 49ers because of Christian, uh, Christian McCaffrey, but... No, no, I no, mean, no. I, I didn't... It I, wasn't I mean, because Christian McCaffrey. I thought the defense would actually help. That. Yeah, San Francisco's uh, defense looked bad. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say real quick, I mean, I know McCaffrey just joined, and I fully expected I, – I mean, I didn't think he was going to have much of an impact, if any, right off the bat. So that's why I went in Kansas City. I didn't even think of 49ers defense being, like, the one to stop Patty Mahomes. I don't think we can judge McCaffrey literally getting Not traded, either. like, what, two days before this? Yeah. I mean, you guys were like, "Oh, McCaffrey's on the team. It changes everything." No, no, no I don't think McCaffrey. It'll. it'll uh, I you said that. Guys were saying I, that. I said okay. that, and I you think did. I was the defense for 49ers. Yeah, I, I thought a combination okay. too. I Fair. thought McCaffrey could just Fair. create plays, and he did just create plays. But once he gets the playbook down, this will be a lot better. But again, the Chiefs went off offensively. Them getting the win, 44 to 20, in. Um, What's the 44 to 23 in what they renamed it from yeah. Candlestick? They renamed it from Candlestick. What was the name of the 49ers? Uh, Levi Stadium. Levi, Levi Stadium. Stadium Levi. Yeah. Levi Stadium. All right. Uh, uh, Candlesticks. Really? Candlestick was the, it used to be the Get name. Get the Steelers off of prime time, please. Uh, oh, my Lord. Yeah. But again, <laughs> um, bad game by the Dolphins. I'm going to flat out say it. The Steelers are a really rough team. Um, 32 for 44. For Kenny Pickett for 257 yards and a 5 point average, one touchdown, three picks, um, and two sacks. Najee Harris only rushing for 65 yards on 17 carries. So that Steelers offensive line is horrible, absolutely atrocious. Uh, Tua Tonga Vailoa back from concussion, 21 for 35 for 261, a 7.5 average, and one touchdown. I will say there was a play where he ran nearly for a first down, and this this guy didn't slide. This guy put his head down. I'm not talking about a shoulder. Oh down. my god! He put I his thought, whole head yeah. down. And I was sitting there watching the game, like you are a fucking idiot. This organization he doesn't care he about. Apologized. Yeah, this organization doesn't care after. about you. Doesn't care about how you turn out. This organization is a shitty organization in football that showed you they were a shitty organization by how they handled your first concussion. And you go out there and you put your head down trying to sacrifice yourself for this team? It's stupid. Stupid, it's, stupid decision by Tua that could have ended terribly. 
the shitty organization, aka Steve Ross, trying to get yeah, Sean yeah. Payne and Brady while they're on contracts. Yeah, <laughs> I got suspended for it. Oh yeah, and lost picks. Jesus they also Christ. lost picks. I don't understand why Miami's just in a bad spot. Uh, Raheem Mostert, sixteen yeah. carry for seventy-nine yards, doing all right. Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill still doing very well for their receiving. Set eighty-eight yards for Waddle, seventy-two for Tyreek Hill. Um, so not bad for Miami, but not a great game. Pat Frymuth was the leading receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, a really dimed in the rough in this offense, along with George Pickens, who had 61 yards himself. Chase Claypool um, still making really weird decisions on the field, 41 yards. Um, he could be a lot better with his body type, but his football IQ is pretty low. Um, but, yeah, the Pittsburgh defense really trying to do the best they could to stop this Miami Dolphins offense, which they, they were able to do for quite a while. Um, but, yeah, it was... It was a rough, yeah, rough I mean, game for the Pittsburgh offense. Pretty much first half, everything was decided. Like, nothing yeah. happened second half. No point scored in third and fourth quiet. quarters. Yeah. It was a weird game. Mm-hmm. A weird Sunday night game. And yeah. we don't like those. Steelers defense, Steelers defense had, like, three picks they could have got. Yeah. And now we got the best them. for last, baby. And then, Let's go. Pickett, and then Pickett tried uh, to go hero ball at the end. Matt Canada uh, needs to go for the Steelers. The Giants. Oh, how the, no, the fuck? Giants, the Bears. The Bears. How the Monday fuck? night football. A weird, weird game for the Patriots and a weird game for the Bears. Um, Bears winning yeah, thirty-three to fourteen. I'm enjoying over here, as you can tell. You can see over here. I'm enjoying. Yeah. Thirty-three to fourteen. Bears win in Foxborough on Monday night football against the Patriots. Patriots splitting time between Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi. Mac Jones. Through an interception early in the game, only his sixth pass attempt in was benched for Bailey Bye Zappi, back. who went out and performed <laughs> very well in the very beginning. He threw 14 for 22 in total, but ended up throwing two picks by the end of the game, which we really see the deal. Justin Fields looked good, 13 for 21, 179, 85 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Justin Fields, David Montgomery, and Khalil Herbert all ran very well. Justin Fields ran for 82 yards, Montgomery ran for 62, and Khalil Herbert ran for 62. Patriots' rush attack was bad. Rayshon Stevenson, 39 yards, Mac Jones, 24. Um, not a great run day for the Patriots, which is usually their bread and butter, which is probably why this didn't end up well. Passing looked atrocious on both sides. Darnell Moody, only 53 yards. Equinami St. Brown, only 48. Cole Komet, only 32. For New England, 68 for Devontae Parker. 59 for Raymond Stevenson. 34 for Jacoby Myers. And then the rest of them were in the double or single digits. Um, yeah. I actually want to go defense first before I start. I'd also want to talk about, real quick, four fumbles lost for Justin Fields. So ball security is something that he really has to work on. But again, Bears yeah. come out with the win on a horrible game from the Patriots. A really good defending well, game. Well, no, it was four fumbles, but he didn't lose any. Well, he still, yes. Well, he I mean, recovered, he, he recovered a couple of them, and he yeah. didn't lose any. But you lose the ball four times. That is an issue. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I kind of think that's the O-line also. Oh, yeah. They, they weren't having the greatest systems. But Go ahead, Mamba. Uh, Justin Fields. Um, let's talk about him real quick. So, I'm pretty sure. Um, offensively, uh, Eberflus switched it up, or whoever the offensive coordinator is. I'm not sure. Um, because typically they were playing Justin Fields as more of a pass first quarterback, and not really running him out or you know you know bootlegging or trailing out. So, I mean, this time around, they're switching up their play calling, and it seems like it's very effective. And Justin, they're playing to Justin Fields' uh, like abilities. Yeah, to his strengths, so, yeah. To his strengths, yeah. He's a good mobile quarterback. He might as well keep him mobile. Yeah, I mean, he, people are comparing him. Like, I've been reading around. People are comparing him to something like Lamar Jackson. And whoa, how he whoa, plays. whoa, whoa. No, whoa. I'm not I'm not kidding. This whoa, is what I read. Whoa. Pump this is the what brakes. I read. He's looking more like a rookie Daniel Jones right now. Let's pump the brakes. <laughs> Fair. Not I have what to I say, said. I have to Just, say Chicago's rushing has almost as many yards as the Patriots rushing and passing yards. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Belichick really thought that they're gonna be running the ball literally everywhere. Yeah, 260 wow. yards total for Patriots, 243 rushing for Chicago. Yeah, that's yeah. so Bears are going a lot more run first than pass first. I mean, like I said, playing to Justin Fields' like strengths now. So, very good switch, very good change. Uh, good job from the staff, you know, adapt, adapting to his strengths. So, 
But also yeah. talking also, about this game, Macedon's probably pretty excited about the Bears in particular after something happened today. Oh, I'll get to that oh, soon. Yeah. Don't we'll say, that, yeah. hey, hey, Bell Belichick, um, you saw what happened to Matt Rule when you tried to do a two QB system, right? Right? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> mm. You got to pick one. Okay. I don't get yeah. Yeah. Do you pick, go with yeah. Zappy? Do you go with Zappy? Do you go with Mac Jones? What yeah, do you do with, with Mac? The... If I'm honest, I go with Mac. He's an all star. You know, you gotta, There's gotta no way they go with Zappy. Yeah. Like yeah. after one yeah. season, you completely do a 180 off of Mac anyway, Jones. Yeah. From Big trade for the Eagles. I'll let, yeah, I'll let Masson break that down. Literally just happened today. It was, make sure I get the right name. It was Robert Quinn. Robert Quinn, yes. Yep. Defensive sure end. Name, Defensive end for oh now God, the Philadelphia Eagles. It. Yeah, oh, oh, the ESPN, they're on it. So Robert yeah. Quinn just traded to the Eagles, which the Eagles, I think, really needed. Um, the Eagles have a um, really good defense all around, except their edge rushers. The Eagles' edge rushers, at least this season, they're not great. You couldn't even name either of them. Derek Barnett got hurt. That's basically what it yeah. is. It's based yeah. on so, someone to take Derek Barnett's spot. People are going to be like, oh, he doesn't have that many sacks. I'm like, but does he QB pressure? Sacks don't mean right. shit. Right, and if you have good guys throw. out on the tackles, you're not going to – the Eagles already are having tackles pinch down and crack block some of the interior linemen because their interior linemen are better. They have um, – Yeah. Oh, what's his name? Uh, they have – There's Fletcher, Fletcher, Fletcher Cox. Cox. Yep, Fletcher da- Cox. Fletcher Cox and Jordan, Jordan Davis. Davis. Yep. They're both and big guys. Brandon, that you have Brandon, yeah. Brandon Graham. Brandon yeah. Graham. Three great Bruce. DTs that any team would start, basically. For me, this does suck, but I mean, we're in rebuild mode anyway, so fourth round pick, I guess we'll take it. Really? I mean, yeah, yeah. why not? No, nothing much we could really do, yeah. I mean, he's not, not good. I mean, how right. how old is Robert Quinn? Let's see if it was a good trade age wise. Uh, 32. 32. 32. So, yeah, that's not a bad trade, I think. You're sending him to Philadelphia where he's probably going to win yeah. a ring in the next few years with the route that Philly's mm-hmm. going. Wow, Holy shit. Rebuilding, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And to finish this out, Bills, Rams, Vikings, Eagles all had buys this week. Um, so now we will look forward to week eight and give our predictions just to give you guys an update. Um, I'll try to keep these up so that they aren't in the way too much. Mamba's currently leading 47 to 17 um, this season so far. Um, his win loss for week seven was 20 and 2. For me, 34-20. Oh, yeah, My win loss for week seven <laughs> was 10 and six. Mastodon is right above me, 36 and 20. Um, and his week seven was eight and eight. Um, we won't all have the same amount of points. We do it that um, we all give which team by which score. So if you get the correct team, like if we pick the Ravens over the Bucks for tomorrow and they win, we all get a point. Whoever who was the closest on the score gets two points. So right now, Mastodon has me for the lead just by one correct point and sc- our score and uh, team game. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at some of the games, break them down and give our predictions before we f- wrap up with one little fun thing at the end of this podcast. Um, Ravens Buccaneers prime video happening tomorrow. That's going to be in Tampa. Um, I don't know. This is kind of a rough one. Both of them coming off a bad week. Ravens still winning, yeah. but the Buccaneers not. Um, Brady tends to really show and play really well in the limelight. Um, and I'm also a Bengals fan, so fuck the Ravens. Um, I think Buccaneers <laughs> are going to win by three. Okay, let me start this off. Uh, Brady left his family for football, okay? And Brady's a little mad, all right? You don't want angry Brady, so I'm going to go Buccaneers by seven. <laughs> uh that O line is just so injured, and they can't get that rush. I know Ravens suck in the second half, but Thursday night's so random. Ravens by three. I have to go Ravens by three. Yeah, Thursday night is random. We all remember this video. Broncos country, let's try. <laughs> <laughs> Broncos anyway, country, let's die. Speaking of the Broncos, Broncos and Jaguars, nine thirty a.m. in London in Wembley Stadium. Um, I think the Broncos blow up their team after this. I'm taking Jaguars by fourteen. I feel mm-hmm. so bad for the London crowd having to see t- these two shitters play over <laughs> there. Holy shit. Uh, these two shitters. Oh, oh no, was, uh, what did he do? What did he do? Like the what wrong thing. Love? I just went to Peyton's oh, places. God. Oh, boy. Oh, God. 
All right, but uh, right. I'll take uh, Jags by three. Jags by three. Well, I think it's going to be maybe low scoring to me. I think Jags by 10. They're going to fix that offense, and the the Denver offense ain't going to do shit. So Jags by 10. Next up, another 1 p.m. game on Fox. Panthers, Falcons in Atlanta. Um, I think the Panthers looked good last week. However, I do think the Falcons are going to win this one by seven. I just think that the Falcons have a better team on paper. The Panthers have dropped so much. I don't think the Panthers are going to be able to week in and week out produce really well. I think the Falcons will get one out this week, um, really performing well, especially that D-line. I think they'll be able to shut down some of that run game that the uh, Panthers have. They, they did beat the Buccaneers, Brady's yeah. team, so. But I think I would have to agree with you. Um, yeah, no, they're just trading out players, tanking. They should be tanking, hopefully. Um, but uh, yeah, Falcons, let's go by 14. I'm saying Falcons by three. Uh, Panthers going to try to keep it tough. It's going to be an ugly game, but Falcons by three. All right. All righty. Bears, Cowboys. Um, Bears aren't getting that lucky again. Cowboys by 14, simple as. <laughs> First of all, $33 for AT&T to the stadium? Really? 33 Really? Huh. That's pretty cheap. Give me the Bears by seven. Uh, <laughs> I got to go Cowboys by seven. I think the defense is going to be too much. Like, the Cowboys defense is still good. Hey, you think a bad wanted, Bears line? We mm. won in Gillette. We'll win in AT&T. My brother in we'll, Christ, are you comparing a win in Gillette against and the we'll, best pass? We'll win in Lincoln, whoa, 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 all right, whoa, 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 baby? Whoa. There's this man named Micah Parsons that's going to turn fucking Justin Fields' ACLs into applesauce, all right? Micah so Parsons you, hey, almost careful. destroyed Justin Dax, Fields. Dax ACLs, you know, is doing that right now. Or Jalen Hurts, you mean? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, he's gonna hurts, yeah, he's going to destroy Justin oh, yeah, Fields. He, 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 yeah, yeah Micah, like destroyed, against he, a Bears line, Micah Parsons is going to have three sacks. Lock it in the parlay. Anyway. Dolphins, yeah, I'm, Lions. I'm, I'm locked with the Bears, so. <laughs> Dolphins, Lions in Detroit. Um, I still think the Lions defense can't really stop one of the best passing attacks, which is weird to say for the Dolphins. Um, so I think mm. the Dolphins will do good here. I don't think there's enough cornerbacks to cover Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle and Mike Gusecki. So I think the Dolphins are going to walk away with a 10-point lead here. Um, I could, Yeah, I could agree with you. Dolph, I mean, the Lions just, where are they? I, I don't know where they are. Uh, so I'm going to go Dolphins by 14. Mm. Uh, Dolphins by seven. It's. Uh, I don't think the. You're really calling it a close one, really? Against the Lions? <sighs> if t- it's going to matter if Tua could still. If Tyreek he still Waddle? has that concussion. I know, but who, Tua's. Who on the defense of the Lions is going to guard both Tua and Jalen Waddle. I know, I know. By gonna give it one more week for a concussion to a, after that back concussion. That's all I have to say. Yeah. That that after those like four picks that should have been picks against him in the Steelers, I think he's still trying to get back in. Yeah. Uh, fair. Fair. Uh, next up, we got the Cardinals and the Vikings. Um, this is going to be in Minneapolis. Um, Vikings are looking good. They're coming off of, I believe, a bye. So, yes. Um, yes. I think, I honestly think the Vikings are going to win this one by seven. It'll be a close game, really offensively powered game. But I'll take the Vikings uh, by five. I think the Cardinals are going to be a little rough reeling from some of that internal drama that really escalated last week. Yeah, I think the Cardinals are too dis- dis- uh, dysfunctional of a team right now. So I'm going to go actually Vikings by 14. I'm going Vikings also, but it's going to be by 20. Uh, Justin Jefferson is going to run all uh, gonna run all over the Cardinals. Call of Duty just coming out this week. <laughs> and Very true. Kingsbury, Very true. Kingsbury needs to be gone. Kingsbury is not a good coach. I agree. Yep. Raiders Saints. Um... This is going to be in New Orleans in the Superdome. Um, I think the Raiders really need wins, and the Saints haven't looked great. Uh, even though the Raiders' defense isn't phenomenal, I think their offense is going to be too much for the Saints' defense, and I think the Raiders are going to come out of this one with a three-point win. Ooh. 
Raiders. This is a tough one. Um, hmm. Give me Saints by three. I don't think the Raiders are that good this year. I think Saints could sneak something through here. Give me Saints by three. Call it again. It's going to be a tank bowl. Tank bowl number three for the game. But I have to say Raiders by three because I rolled a die because I couldn't pick who would lose. <laughs> like, fair, fair. It, it's it's going to be a bad game. Um, Jets, Patriots in East Rutherford. Um, Patriots coming off a bad loss to the Bears on a short week. They're probably practicing right now, knowing Belichick. Um, so... <laughs> I think the Jets also losing Brees Hall. I think the Patriots are going to stomp the Jets in this one. I'm going to predicting a Patriots 14 point win. Yeah, this one's a little tough because um, you lose Brees Hall, which was your main guy carrying the team. Um, oof, this is tough. Honestly, I think the Jets could squeak it by. I, I think with the Patriots, they're still trying to figure out. The whole Mac and Zappy Bailey, who starring quarterback. So let me get Jets by three. It's gonna be a close one. Going Jets by six. You have McAdurp and Patricia as your offensive coordinators on a QB system that's trying to use two of them. Yeah. No, nah, it's not gonna work. Jets are Jets are looking much better than Patriots this year, which is a what the fuck. And also, yeah. someone from the Jets will step up for Brees, honestly. They got so many picks. James so Robinson. Maybe. They just traded for James Robinson, that is correct. Yeah, that is, oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe. Um, final 1 p.m. game, Steelers Eagles, Battle of Philadelphia. Um you mean Pennsylvania? Or Pennsylvania, yeah. <laughs> Basically Philadelphia, because <laughs> Pittsburgh does not exist on the football map at this point. Um, it's gonna be Eagles by a lot. Steelers offense sucks. Eagles just got another pass rusher. Eagles defense looks good. Steelers pass rush isn't great except for Cam and Hayward. Eagles have good interior linemen. Um, they have a good run game. They have a good pass. It, Eagles look great. Um, I think the Eagles are going to prove to 7-0, and they'll drop the Steelers by 17. Mm. I'm going to go Eagles by 21. I think, yeah, you pretty much nailed it. Eagles are way too good. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm saying Eagles still, but they're going to give up points in the third quarter, run out the fourth quarter with a 12-minute drive, and win by 10. They're going to go up early, <laughs> give up points in the third quarter, and then somehow win by 10. All righty. Titans-Texans. Um, I think Derrick Henry wins this game. This is in Houston, but it doesn't matter. Titans are going to, I think, trounce the Texans all on the back of Derrick Henry's run game because the Texans' interior D-line is not that great. I think the Titans are going to win by 10. I would have to agree with you on that one. Um, yeah, Titan with... Uh, Derrick Henry literally just grabbing 30 carries last week. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, Titans, let's go by seven. I'm going Titans also, but I'm saying by three, they cannot close out people. So they're going to barely win it by three. Yeah, fair, fair. All righty, next one up. This would have been the Carson Wentz versus his former team, <laughs> but he's out. This is with Matt Ryan versus the Commanders, but he's benched. So this is now Taylor Heineke versus uh, oof, who's filling in for Ellinger, e Ellinger, Ellinger, Ellinger. Yeah, Ellinger, Heineke, and Ellinger. Um, who? Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. A lot of the Colts fans are excited that Ellinger's playing. I don't know how well he's going to do, but I think if the Commanders are going to win this one by seven. I think the reason is that for that is that Jonathan Taylor is going to be the main workhorse for the Colts. However, the commander's interior D-line is phenomenal, and they're going to really shut down that run, really leaving the Colts with no option. I mean, that the, com the commander's going to find a way to win. Scary Terry can find a way to win, even though his team around him is Terry. ass. Yeah. Ron Rivera will find a way. Give me uh, commanders by seven. Tommy's by seven. I'm going to hate myself for saying this. I have to go commies by 14. O-line sucks. <laughs> sucks. By the way, cold. 32 bucks for tickets at Lucas Oil? I'm, I'm not too far from India. It's just three hours. I can <laughs> go and watch I'm the like game an, real quick. I'm like an hey. hour from Indy. Like that, or maybe two hours from Indy. Yeah. That'd be a bad but thing no, to go to. Um, Heineke is going to pull it out. He's going to win again. You want to go, go, you, you go get nosebleed seats, Mamba? You want to go to the, the fucking Colts <laughs> like, Commanders game? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't God. know if I want to go to that. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. 
three hours for a shit game? Probably not. Oh, yeah. 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 49ers Rams. Um, I, I, I honestly, I would wear a Bengals. I would wear a Bengals jersey to that game. I don't care. <laughs> Um, 49ers Rams. Um, this is a big rivalry for these two teams. This is in SoFi Stadium in LA. Um, I think the 49ers are gonna win this game regardless because more of their fans are gonna be there than the fucking Rams fans. Um, it's always how that happens. Um, I think the 49ers, especially now having Christian McCaffrey learning the playbook a little bit better after having a full week of that under the belt, they're gonna be able to run all over this Rams defense, which if they can't get pressure, can't do anything. Um, so I think the 49ers are going to walk away with a 10 point win here. So if tickets as high as 134 bucks, um, and literally all the seats are going to be filled with Niners fans, uh, which is going to be fucking hilarious. Uh, give me 49ers by 14. Let's go 14. 14. Yeah. I'm going to go a little bit lower just because not, I'm not counting out Niners defense yet. They face against the Chiefs. Who's going to beat the Chiefs in defense with yeah. their defense? Hmm. <laughs> but Niners defense is still good. Hold Cooper Cup. Matt Stafford can't throw to anybody. Niners by seven. It's going to be a close game. And now what looks like to be the game of the week, the final 425 slot, Giants at Seahawks. This is where either the Seahawks run is going to stumble more or the Giants will finally lose their second game of the season. Um, this is going to be a tough one, but I think it's going to be the Giants. The reason being is that um, the Giants run the football. You know, that Dable, uh, Dable wants to run Dabble. the football. Dabble wants to run the football. And the Seahawks defense cannot stop the run, especially now that they have traded away Bobby Wagner. Um, so I think that that run defense that for the Seahawks being lacking and the strength of the Giants' run defense or offense is going to be good. Really set up a lot of things for Daniel Jones to do a lot of different options and set up his passing game. So I think in the end, the Giants will win a close one in Seattle by three. Yeah, I was originally going to go Seahawks, but I kind of have to agree with you. I mean, if you saw from previous week, freaking Saquon, 100 yards, 100 plus yards. Daniel Jones, 100 plus yards on the ground. And yeah, that's going to be hard to Against the Chargers, who have a good D-line. Who do the Seahawks have in the D-line? So like, I know they're without Evan Neal now, but still. Now, do I think it was a high-scoring game? No. So I'm going to go uh, Giants by a touchdown, so seven. I kind of want to say Giants, but I think Seahawks somehow pull it out. And this is nothing against the Giants. Ooh. I think this is going to be a this is going to be a good game. I just got think a Geno Smith. Eagles fan here. All right, calm down now. I picked the Giants. Did I pick? Yeah, I picked the Giants last week. This is not against the Giants, but I think this is a Geno Smith coming out moment of winning it on a last minute touchdown by four. Yo, it's okay. I never picked the Packers. You can do the same for the Giants, okay? In your division. I'm, I'm just saying Seahawks honest. by four. Yeah, Seahawks by four. And then the NBC night game, um, <laughs> Packers-Bills <laughs> in Buffalo. Pa- uh, Bills by 17. Bills by 24. <laughs> <laughs> Bills by 30. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, yep. Am I surprised? No. And then the no, final game. Uh, the final Battle game, of Ohio. The mm. Final game of week eight. Battle of Ohio, as Mamba alluded to. Cincinnati Bengals in Cleveland against the Browns. Um, a lot of this is saying Cincinnati. The match predictor is saying Cincinnati by 62.6% to the Cleveland's 37. Um <laughs> That shit always lies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I still think, obviously, with Jacoby Brissett passing the football, I think it'll be a little bit easier. Um, again, pass rush is going to be a difficulty for the Bengals because of the skill and talent of that um, uh, Browns O-line. Um, but if we can stop the run, pressure the quarterback, which I think we'll be able to do, we'll be able to win the game. The Browns will not be able to beat us through the air. Um, so I think the Bengals are also going to establish well against that um, – very bad passing defense of the Browns and win the game by 10. Bengals by 10? Yep, Bengals by 10. The Bengals are going to have a nice and nice and easy massage, all right? So give me a Bengals by 14. Fuck you, Mike. <laughs> if you get what I mean. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, be nice I think and this easy. is, I think this is Neller... 
yeah, I think this is another Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase game, like 400 yards passing, 200 yards receiving by them. Bengals by seven. It's, it's yeah. going to be the pass rush for the Browns, but I think Bengals by seven. And both the Chiefs and Chargers got bye weeks. So, yep. They um, are sleeping in tonight or that day. Now, where are you so, showing him up? I wanted to do something special. Oh, um, no. Oh, and I wonderful. wanted to figure out the best. I wanted to figure out quarterbacks. Um, oh, for the different teams. Let me see if I can find them more. I'm trying to find a tier list. I'm just going to find a quick tier list, and we're going to rank the quarterbacks. I think. I think this yeah, one looks pretty good. Um, I think this has all of them, but this is a little. This is the twenty. I need. I need to find one that's twenty twenty two twenty twenty three. I think it was going to be rough until you get to later in the season just because probably injuries or some other stuff. Didn't come prepared to the party? <laughs> <laughs> or you could do just a... goddamn quarterback. <laughs> if yeah. Worst so, comes worse, so you get to show the teams. Oh, I go. like this. So, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I there's a lot it. of players that some are like not playing. Or, actually, I'm, let me just do yeah. Cam. Cam Newton's yeah. in there. There's, there's, th- this is the best one I could find because there's some guys that aren't playing. So what? Um, the? Yo, fi- yo, they got uh, Fitz Magic, Fitz Magic yeah. in there. So we won't oh, rank shit. some of them. We won't rank some of them. We'll only yeah. rank the starting QBs. Um, so let's just go from there. Um, so yeah, who's, let's. Who's the, first one? the first one. I don't know who this first one is. I know the second one is Desmond Riddler, um, right here. Do you want me to? Uh... So. First of all, we got to figure out what are our tiers going to be, because so we can rename the tiers. You want to keep it elite, great, average, backup should be out of the league. And I want to make. I want to do add yeah. a row below. Oh, the colors. Yeah. Who? <laughs> so I don't know who this first guy is at all. It's a BYU quarterback. Um. I... But. And then I think we just have to put Fitzpatrick in there because he's retired. Um, I don't see anybody else. That's Davis Mills. Who is this? I don't know who that is at all. Yeah. Looks like he's in a Buccaneers uniform. Is this? Is, that's not Kyle Trask. That's not Kyle Trask. Where's Brady? Is Brady not in this? Uh, what the fuck? Yeah, this is a terrible list. You, pick, you, picked, you get... picked all wrong list. I, I, I'm just going to do... I'm just gonna do NFL is this one teams. is this the retirement Brady list? <laughs> Apparently. Probably. Holy shit. I guess that was supposed to be Trask. I can't remember what he looks like. All right, here. Let me do this. We're just gonna use the logos for the teams because everyone knows the yeah. starting quarterback. Yeah. So we'll do best. We'll do good. We could like say the middle of the pack. With the best quarterbacks, you know, like that works. Like, bad. And this is only by this season. This is only by this yeah. season's rankings. So we'll also rank them. The furthest to the left is the best. So they'll also be ranked in the rows themselves. Okay. So let's start out. So Geno we'll Smith. Geno Smith. Um, thus far in the season. Again, this is just the season. So if we were doing, yeah. obviously, if we were doing, like, the best quarterback this far, Tom Brady would be best. Like, yeah. You can't mm, that. I don't know about this season. Oh no, 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 well, no not this season. I'm saying of all oh, time. Yeah. If okay, we were doing okay, all time, okay. Brady would be number one. We can't it, argue that. But we're doing just this season. So so far, Geno Smith has looked good. Actually, let's. Do I would it. agree. I would put him in good. good. He he looked. He's looking good. Looks yes. solid. So yeah, and then we'll do middle of the pack. We'll just do average. Average. So, yeah. So, Geno Smith has looked solid. Looked very solid. You should now, do, uh, awful as should retire or some shit. It's awful, yeah. Elite, <laughs> yeah. good, average, bad, awful. Um, just Broncos yeah. country, let's ride. Broncos country. <laughs> Fucking. Just add just... a tear for that. <laughs> um, we'll do Matt Ryan thus far. Matt Ryan's looked bad. Not awful. He's also a lot awful. of good pass. No. no, no, I don't think he's awful. I, I think he's He had bad. one good game. He, he has had, game. he's had a ton of completions and a good pass percentage he's been throwing like 50 pass attempts a game it's insane um okay fair but i think he's looked bad he's not looked awful but i think he's looked bad i think that's a safe place to put him now the steelers now i think we have to go with whoever's played more and at this point it's been kenny pickett um hasn't been turbisky 
I, it might have really? been Trubisky. Yeah, I, I think they're, they're about they the same amount of play. I think if we just lump them together, they both looked like bad. Bad. I said bad. Average, bad, bad average. Probably I, worse than, than Matt, Matt Ryan. Ryan. Really? Better than Matt Ryan? The two of them combined better than Matt Ryan? No, 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 no. Yeah, no, I think worse no, than Matt no. Ryan. Marcus worse Mariota. Ryan, but... Honestly, Marcus Mariota feel like is average. He's not. Yeah, he yeah. has not done terrible. He has not done no. terrible. He's been. Yeah. He won't win because of him, but you won't lose because of him. It's just he's just yeah. there. I think also the same thing goes for Jimmy Garoppolo, but he's been average. I would above agree. above Mariota, but not below Mariota. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, I would agree with that. New York Jets, it has been primarily that, Zach Wilson. I don't he's not that great if I'm honest. No, but I don't think he's bad. I don't he's right there with honestly, I would I would say he's a tie with Mariota. Probably better because he's no, actually had I think Mariota's I think he, I think he's bet uh I think he's better than Mariota and Garoppolo. Really? Like if I think well, if I say the high better I'll this say season? He's, yes. I don't know hmm. about that one. I think I don't think Zach Wilson's doing that great, if I'm honest. He's fair enough. It's been a run first team. I would honestly put him in Maybe. bad because he I mean, in my opinion, I don't think he's been he's not an average quarterback. Like he's not a Garoppolo, he's not a Mariota. I mean if we look at the other teams But better than Matt Ryan thus far. Yeah, I would I wouldn't so. call him bad though. I think he's bad. I don't think okay, we could we'll come back to it. How about that? We'll see. Okay. Well, you just want to just like do this and then. Mid. Mid. Yeah. It's below <laughs> average, but not bad. Here's mid. So Zach Wilson, mid. mid. Uh, you could you already know this. Elite. Yeah, elite. 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 Insanely elite. Um, I would say Kyler Murray has looked probably between good and average. I don't know where to put him, though. Probably I if he's good, good, he's worse. He's wor- He's been worse than Geno Smith, for sure. I agree. It doesn't um, help. It doesn't help with Kingsbury. Uh, it yeah. doesn't, but he still is a great quarterback. Skill-wise, he's yes, elite. this season he's looked good, yeah. Yeah. He can be an elite quarterback. He just needs to figure his shit out with staff. Yeah. Um, and then honestly, hot take, I think Jalen Hurts has been average. I think his no. team around him's been great, but I think he's been he's been average. I don't agree with that. I think he's good. I think, I he's, think good. he's better than. I think he's I, he's better than Kyle Murray. Yeah. Fantasy he's points. Be... Just look at the fantasy points. Well, he's I'm not doing better than. Points. I mean, you could compare a little bit with fantasy points, but he's doing better than Kyler Murray. Come on. Yeah. And maybe Geno Smith. You gotta give him props. He's they're six and zero. Oh. Come on. Right, but how much of like, that is Jalen Hurts? I mean, a sizable amount. You can't just you can't say the defense is winning them games right now. The offense has to be pulling Min- through okay. to get a six the, and zero. Oh. I on. have to say this: the Minnesota game, he looked elite. Okay, okay so yeah. We'll put him above Geno, but still in the good category. But he's not average. I could deal There's with that. No way. He's yeah, not true. average. No. Um, he has not looked bad. No. Andy Dalton James? looked okay, and Jameis has been no, injured. James, what's the name? But I think mm, it's mid, mid very below mid. the yeah. Jets. The very Saints mid. haven't looked great. Um, so, oof, Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi, they've had their moments, but I think it's probably like top of the average i, I think i think they're mid i think they're mid below kyle Zappy, i think they're above mariota they're Zappy above mariota. Was throwing a lot of picks and mac jones have not but the games they've looked good they've looked really good so they've been wishy-washy so yeah. i think maybe here below garoppolo but okay. better than than uh i want to say kyle Pitts, i can go with that it's mariota um yeah. justin herbert's not looked great but he's been better than average i think he's been better than kyler murray this far though he's struggling through a rib injury but i don't think he's been geno smith and geno smith has looked really good yeah so I think it's I safe to say think... to put him in between Geno Smith and Kyler Murray for how good Justin Herbert's been this year. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, Bengals. Um, he's elite. S- low elite. start, elite. but especially after last week, I think he's, he's elite. elite. Probably below Josh elite. Allen. Yeah, definitely below Josh, that Josh dude Allen. That slings the ball. Like, yeah. like he is. Oh. Justin Fields. Now, I, I want to be biased here. I think he's very mid. I wouldn't say average. I wouldn't say he's bad yet. I think definitely low did... side of mid has has been fine. Yeah. It's not a lot of his issues, but his lines issues. I, yeah, I can agree that with and mid. also they finally are using him as more of a running quarterback now. 
So I think he's going to improve a lot better. And you might want to save this later. We could reorganize throughout the week. But, um, yeah, I think he's mid, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dallas Cowboys. Um, it's mostly that one's Cooper rough Rush. We have, honestly, to, we have to grade Cooper Rush. I think it's minus. here. I think it's average. Yeah. average. Some his good first wins. bad game was... Actually, no, yeah, over here. First... Cooper Rush got them to four this... straight wins. Only bad game was yeah. the Eagles. Yeah, so I think yeah, he's high Eagles average. And now Dak's back, and Dak's looked mid thus far, but I think it's high average. Um, the Je- the Dolphins have been all sorts of issues. I think it, you just have to put it in mi- the middle of the mid-tier because they've had injury issues. Tua has not been on as much. Um, so yeah. and also there's also um, Teddy was on there, but then also injured, so they had the third string. I yeah. can't remember the name of it. Um, a- a- a Skyler Thompson. Yeah, Skyler Thompson. Uh, the Rams, honestly. Bad. Oh, I'm struggling oh, between ooh, bad and you awful. You think it's awful? He, if he throws um, the Cooper Cup, he's not bad. If he doesn't throw the Cooper Cup, he's bad. Yeah, no, he's actually no. Put him in awful. He's doing yeah. worse than Tua. If I'm honest, he's yeah, doing worse than Tua. He's it, not. After that surgery, Matt, Matt, Matt Stafford has lost a step. Matt Stafford has really lost yeah. a step. He's becoming Matt Pat Ryan's Stafford. Um, Derek Carr <laughs> has actually, I think, looked just like Mariota. At least himself, yeah. his team, his team's defense has struggled, but Derek Carr's looked okay. I'll just he's turn not, off my cam one second. He's not great, he, but he's, he's not awful. He's dealing with the Josh McDaniels as a head coach. Yeah, <laughs> it's rough. It's, um, then we're gonna go back. Be. We're gonna go back and look at Brady this season, which honestly. Brady, Brady himself hasn't looked terrible, but his team has looked bad. I think it's the same boat as, um, da- as uh, Car, Car, yes, uh, Derek Car. Brady, wait, which one do you do before Brady? Sorry, I just... Derek Car, Car, average. Oh, Car, the average. Yeah, we're good. Yep. Um, yeah, I think just right about in the average place. You know, um, I'm not Deshaun Watson. No I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, Deshaun Watson hasn't played yet. It's been just Jacoby Brissett. It's been mid. It's been mid. like he's won some games, so I'll put him above the Jets. But it's been mid. It's been very mid play. Giants. Um, it's been elite. 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 No, 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 no. By putting ahead Daniel Jones. Yes. Ahead of Jalen Hurts. But what Daniel ahead Jones has done? He's had more rush yards than Jalen Hurts. He's had more rush yards than that, and he's blown better passes, less interceptions. I mean, the beginning of the season, he wasn't all that. He's been clicking now. I'm not saying he's bad, but he's not. He's been winning them games. He's, he's been the reason they're winning games. Yeah, both a dual Saquon threat is also winning games for him too. True, true, but I think he's also a lot of his rush yards are coming from that as well. I think I would put them as elite, just barely elite, no, but still no. elite. Daniel Jones, is, I think, is has bro, been elite. Daniel no. Jones has been an elite quarterback no. thus far. If you're only looking I at the could... season, he's been elite. If you're only looking at the season, what about his game has not been elite? There's no way he's as good as Josh Allen or Joe Burrow. Well, he's not better than Josh Allen. He's below them. That's why we're ranking them in this way. So he's just in elite. Like I'd put him right here. If I could, all the way You're over to the very right Mastodon, side. You're about to piss off Mastodon, dude. You're about to piss off. It hurts. You know what? <laughs> I'm sorry, but the 6-0 and Eagles and the you ranking New York higher than the Eagles? New York has barely any defense. Has no one to throw to. And Daniel Jones has been winning them games. Who is Jalen Hurts throwing to? AJ Brown, Devontae. AJ Brown. And, yeah, and Dallas, AJ Brown. Tell me you're an all star wide receiver core and you're mad at me for putting him in the good category, not elite, when Daniel Jones is throwing to literally no, 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 Aaron no, no, Rodgers no, 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 level no. of receivers. I was no 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 no. I'm not saying that I'm mad that Jalen I like I would say edge of good almost to elite for Jalen Hurts. That's all I'm saying about that. But Daniel uh, for Jalen Hurts, but Daniel Jones, I'm not saying he's bad. I would say he's good. He's doing good this year. If Aaron Rodgers, if elite. Aaron Rodgers was doing this, no, 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 if you no, flip Aaron, Aaron Rodgers and Daniel Jones, you you and the Giants were still six and one, Aaron Rodgers would be elite. No listen, question. Listen, I think you put New York, you put Daniel Jones right and good, but above um the Eagles with uh Jalen Hurts. I can't say easily yet. It's still too early. I'll compromise I'll compromise for that one. All right, all right. But not elite. All right. Um, next up, we're Broncos. about to fight you for that oh, one, bro. Oh, <laughs> just put him in awful. Yeah, it's awful, dude. It's, it's, it's not even so worth. It's not even worth. 
Yep, awful. Um, Jared Goff, awful. Um, uh, he's had a good game. I would say bad. Wait, than- wait, 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 wait. Hold oh, on, wait. hold on, hold on. Backtrack a bit. I think you put Jerry Goff as bad because he's had some great games. Like early on, yes. week one through week three. Okay. He's I will put him in the very good. far end of the bad category. And I'll, yes. put, Ty, I'll put Trevor Lawrence in the very high end of the bad category, I think. Which, actually, I want to made... mention something. Uh, was it Jared Goff and um, the Matthew Stafford trade? That's that trade. Looking interesting it's, now, huh? It's no, it's still a Rams win because they got a Super Bowl out of it. Yeah, they got and a Rams. Basically, they, and also they they they're just giving up draft picks. It's they don't care about draft picks. Um, okay. yeah, Washington's think, weird. Washington's weird. I think it's just been bad. You have to rate probably worse Wentz, than golf, but it's probably yeah. Bad. Yeah, Wentz was even bad when he played. Um, honestly, Kirk Cousins thus far has looked really good. Um, I don't think he's been better than Geno Smith because he had some off games, especially in prime time. But I think he's been better than Justin Herbert thus far. I think he's in the good category. I, have, I would have to agree with you with that. If you whip him about Jalen Hurts, I would actually not have been mad. Um, so Patrick Mahomes, I say you put him in between Bills and Bengals. I yeah. think that makes yeah. sense. I yeah, think Josh it's... Allen outshined him in the game they played against each other, and that gives the Josh Allen the head. But again, Patrick Mahomes has played elite thus far. Um, Lamar has also played elite. I still think he's... Not playing as good as Burrow, but still in that elite category. I think he's been better than he's all not the doing other what he, Yeah, he's not doing what he was in the first. Like, well, two he had one bad game. I have him on fantasy team. He's been scoring yeah. like crazy, though, otherwise. Um, Baker, yeah. <laughs> Awful. I think Awful. I would put him over here. Oh, no. No, you know, Stafford. Always. Stafford. He's no, 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 no. no. Way too he's, many he's better there. than Russell. He's better than Russell right now. It was better than Russell. Stafford's better than so, Russell or Russell's better than Stafford? No, it goes Stafford, Baker, then Baker. Carolina, then Russell. <laughs> um, Titans, it's Bad. been like low end of mid. Mid. One Tenhill's all right. Yeah, maybe just like. Ten, I mean, Tenhill has been a very average quarterback. or like bo- Very below average quarterback. It's not an average. Okay, fair, fair. Fair. Um, okay, yeah, I'm good with that. Texans, no one even talks about them. They're doing awful. Um, For Green Bay. Green Bay has been did. put him below the Bears, put him below the Bears, put him below the Bears. <laughs> no, below they've the been Bears. better than the Bears. They've been better than uh, I would put him right here. Same. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers has been very mid thus far. And been between Tua Tua and the mess that's going on in Miami and the Andy Dalton and Jameis Winston issues in New Orleans. Okay. So now now I want to um, rank each tier. Redo this within the teams. No, I think we just did that. I wonder. There we go. Reset. Save it. And then I want to do speed. I want. I want. I just want to talk about this speed <laughs> of speed, <laughs> speed of the quarterback in each position. So fast as fuck, boy. Fast. Yeah. The, your first one should be mm. fast as fuck, boy. Fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> Elusive. Little scrambler. <laughs> Little scrambles. Pylon. Pylon. 80 year old Ben Roethlisberger. I'm going to go spend his name. So just. Uh, I mean, for starting with Gino, is he, is he a quick quarterback? He's 32. He's not. He's not blazing he's fast. Elusive. He's not slow. All right, let, let's quickly get stuff out of the way about you know what we're looking at. We're gonna look at Tom Brady's immobile. We're gonna look at Matt Ryan's even more right, immo- immobile. Ah, uh, um, yeah. Rogers, little scrambler, maybe. Yeah, I'll do Rogers. He was he was it was here. He was elusive, elusive in his heyday, but I think a little scrambler now. Davis uh, Mills Josh, Josh is Al- scrambler. <laughs> Josh Allen is blazing fast. Or, uh, no, or he's quick. quick. Okay. He's pretty quick. big, dude. He's a big quick. guy. Yeah, I, um, I think forget. we're gonna say Lamar's the fastest. Lamar, I think, J, yeah. I think right behind him is Kyler Murray. They're Murray. both blazing fast. Um, Daniel Jones, where you gotta put him? You gotta put him. There you go. Yeah, I don't think Daniel he's Jones. that fast. Daniel Jones is insanely fast. I know he trips over himself, but still, I would do <laughs> Russell Wilson as elusive. So I would elusive. do actually. I would do Joe Burrow as elusive as well. 
Um, he's not insanely fast, but he's very elusive in the pocket and can also scramble. He had a 20-yard run in the game a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, Patrick Mahomes, I would also put as elusive, but more elusive than Burrow. He doesn't scramble a lot, but he stays he's, in the pocket. Nah. Yeah. I think um, he's quick. He's quick. He is I could go with I mean, that. I've seen him run. He's at the yeah. edge of quick. I like. He's not... Mac Jones. Mac Jones run. <laughs> Bailey's not really. runs a bit. Um, I would go Zach Wilson is more Ooh. elusive than Russell elusive. Wilson. Yeah. Um, Geno Smith. Mm. He he's tends to say the pocket. Like I would say he's a little he, bit slower than Burrow, maybe. He's, he's a little bit slower. Honestly, very close. I would put Kenny Pickett. I'm calling this Kenny Pickett, this Steelers pick. I'd put him as quick. Kenny Pickett's yeah. actually pretty quick with the ball. He's a young guy. Mariota, I'd put him at the high end of elusive, very fast guy. Yeah. Garoppolo, little scrambler, probably slower than Rodgers. Jalen Hurts, oh, I would go. He's, I would actually go blazing fast. fast. I would go the far end of blazing fast. Um, I think he's okay. Jameis he's Winston, kind of Andy Dalton. Than... No. Hey, Especially after yeah. the injury, Jameis is going to be slow. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Justin at least Fields. Quick. I think quick, he's but quick. not not as quick as Allen, I think. I mean, he's showing himself. Dak, he's quick out there, Dak is no. Dak really can be quick. He, he he's can definitely be quick. Elusive. I would put him he's above elusive. Wilson. Yeah. I put him right behind Burrow. Above Gino. Yeah. I think Fair because enough. he is young. Hmm. The, yeah. It, yeah, Fair. it's Yeah. Herbert? Um Herbert, I'll put as a little scrambler, high end though. He's, I don't think he's he really young. Scrambles quick, but he doesn't scramble a lot yet. Tua, I would do elusive right behind yeah. Mariota. Um, immobile in, in fucking mobiles. Matthew Stafford can't move in the pocket. Derek Carr scrambler, would do a little mobile. scrambler. I would put him above yeah. there. Jacoby yeah. Brissett. I would actually do elusive for Jacoby Brissett. I would he, say a little bit more be. than Burrow. Yeah, he can be. He's just getting a little old. Taylor Heineke, I think now. If we go Taylor Heineke oh, with the Washington. Elusive. Yeah, elusive. I would do elusive. I would do less than Burrow, but more than okay. Prescott. Um, Goff, Jared Goff, little scrambler. He doesn't At the edge much. of elusive into little scrambler, yeah, more than or Herbert probably. Scrambler. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trevor Lawrence, I would do high he elusive. Could... He's still very yeah. fast. He doesn't show it a lot. Um, <laughs> fucking yeah, I'm gonna put Brian Tannehill in immobile. That man cannot move. Um, I don't know who the fuck is playing for Carolina. Hey, go. I don't Baker. know. I don't fucking <laughs> new Baker. I don't fucking know. I would say, say it's Baker. Baker. Baker would probably be like right here. Um, yeah. And then he Kirk, he Cousins. Long Kirk Cousins. Kirk um, Cousins. Little <laughs> scramble. Does he scramble? He's at, he's, he does. He's, Less than golf, though. Less than golf. Yeah. So this proves my point that I think actually I think you, I think you can make that case. I think you can make that case right there. It, okay. It's, yeah. Josh Allen is right there. Like he's. Yeah, it's either quick or blazing so fast. You're telling me the Bears have a chance with Justin Fields that they could turn into a good team in the future in Arlington, Fix that O-line. Illinois. <laughs> Fix that O line. That O line's only going to be fixed once we if... build that new stadium in Arlington. Uh, man. I want to do one more of these. One more because I have one I think that's going to get us up in arms. Um... Oh, God. Oh, boy. Okay, I might not know all these, which might show some of my issues with all-time NFL. You do something with Arby's. Oh, old time. <laughs> oh, oh, what the fuck? best Who's running backs running of back? all time. Oh put god, the, I have to remember. Put some the refrigerator at us. Put the fridge at us. For, no, he's not even on this list. He was a DT. What are you talking about? All right. Oh yeah. He um, was a DT. Fuck. Yep. So you have Jerome Bettis, um, Earl Campbell. At least a. Uh, oh, this was the Chiefs running back, early 2000s. Real quick. Priest Holmes. Um, Wait, is Walter crap. Payton on there? Yeah, he is down here. Um, I don't know who That's... this is. If someone can look that up. The uh, Denver running back. That is Eric Dickerson. Then you have, is that Herschel Walker? 33 for the Cowboys? Oh, for Emmett Smith. so bad at this, my That's guy. Emmett Smith. That's Marshall just, Falk. Oh, That's Jim oh. Brown. That's Jim Brown. Then you have Adrian Peterson, uh, Marcus Allen, Bo Jackson, I don't know who that is. That's Frank Gore. That's Ladania Tomlinson. Beast Quake. Um, you have. Is that Beast Mode? Yeah, Beast Mode. Um, oh, Barry yep. Sanders. Is that Franco Harris? 
No, he wasn't running back. Yeah, no, who is that then? Was he? Steelers. So I don't know these two guys right here. These two right here and this guy. Um, so let's start with Walter Payton. Put him Walter in there. <laughs> um, hey, Bears only Super Bowl, my guy. We got I think we get like these are all really good running backs of all time. Um, we just have to look at. Oh my god, this is gonna take us a while. Oh, to the I can't find. There. I can't find who the fuck is number ten for the Broncos. Oh, is that supposed to be uh, Terrell Davis? Which one? Broncos. The Broncos. Probably is he a Hall of Famer? Because that's probably it. Oh, it's number thirty. Is that number thirty for him? I'm yeah. Sure. Yep, Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis. We just need number thirty-three on the old old. This is like pre Emmett Smith um, Cowboys, and then number thirty-two mm. on the Steelers. I think that's Franco Harris. That looks like Franco Harris. Which I, if that is, that's F for this chart. Tony Dorsett. Oh, uh -oh. Tony Dorsett. That could be Tony Dorsett. Oh, I'm trying to look at. Sorry, I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> again? I'm back, yes, again. And know. this is OJ. 36 is OJ Simpson. Oh, okay. I recognize that killer instinct. Yeah, it's oh, Tony Dorsett for Cowboys. Yep, Tony Dorsett for Cowboys. Um, and then, ooh. 30. The Rams. Wait, the Rams? That's Marshall Falk. This is right here. This is Eric yeah. Dickerson. That's Marshall yeah. Falk. I'm trying to okay. see this 32 Steelers. on the Steelers. That looks like that looks like Franco Harris. I'm pretty sure that's Franco Harris. Okay, it is Franco Harris. I thought he was yeah. a different okay. position player. Sorry. All right, should we get this underway? <laughs> yeah. There we go. Now we figured everyone out. Uh, Frank, we're starting out Franco Harris and F. Immaculate reception. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all they remember. Yeah. Um. I think you got to put Emmett Smith. Barry Sanders in S. at least S. Yeah. Yeah. Barry, Barry Smith, Sanders, Barry Emmett Sanders Smith, S. and Adrian Peterson in S. Adrian Peterson. Um, we'll work on that. We'll S. work on that rank. We'll work on that ranking. Um, yeah. I think Eric OJ Dickerson. Dickerson a. Eric Dickerson, I think, is A because of his single season rushing record. I think OJ Simpson's OJ right behind Simpsons, him. A. Um, I would put Jerome Bettis in okay. C right above Priest Holmes. That's not the only thing OJ was running from. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think you have, to put, there, you have to put Bo Jackson in D because his, his career was so short, sadly. I think if you're looking that at all-time greatness. I think you need to put Walter Payton uh, in A, and we can talk about moving him up to S later. I think that's going to be a hot-button topic. But let's just get everything else settled. Um, B, we'll go with... Um, crap. Uh, uh, Earl Campbell. There you it said is. it before. Uh, Earl, Earl Campbell. Campbell. Yep. Um, Marshall Falk, I think, will also go B right behind. Actually, no, we'll go, he's. I think he's worse than. Well, he's wait, a super. By the way, you did A, B, D, C, F. Yeah. <laughs> a, B, D, <laughs> Why is there a. I didn't make this, someone else did. So C, <laughs> D, <laughs> F. Okay. Oh my god. I don't know why someone made it D then L. Okay, that's weird. Fucking so Christ. Did you All mean right, to put some people in D and not C? Now I think about it. No, I think uh, this is. No, yeah. I I think I know what he was going with. Tony Dorsett, B or C? Yeah, I think I would put him in D. Oh, right, Terrell Davis. Ter uh, I meant Terrell Davis, sorry. Oh, Terrell Davis, yeah. Herschel Walker, you know. Um, Are you saying Terrell Davis is D? I think he's worse than Marshall Falk, and Marshall Falk is worse than okay. Bo Jackson. But I think, but he's and, not the he helped win the Super Bowls for. It. I think just because of how good he was, I think we have to put Bo Jackson up here in B. And I think he's also yeah. better than, but I don't think he was better than OJ Simpson. But I think he's also better no. than um, Earl Campbell. Earl Campbell. Um. All right, Ladanian Tomlinson. Whew. He's not the one that lost Chargers games. That was both yeah. the teams. No shit. I think he's better than Bo Jackson just because of his legacy and his longer career. But also, I don't think he's as good as some of these guys up here. OJ yeah. Simpson, Eric Dickerson. He didn't have the insane stats. Uh, Jim Brown, one of the first pioneers to do it. I think he's just an A above Ladanian. Um, and I also think above OJ, but not better than Eric Dickerson and Walter Payton, who were record setters. Um, 
I would put Frank Gore in D above Jerome Bettis just because of his longevity, but other than that, I don't know. Uh, Marcus Allen, I would put below, I think above Frank Gore because of championships, maybe in C. I think I'd put him in C, but below Terrell Davis. Herschel Walker, I'd put above Marcus Allen. And then finally, Marshawn Lynch, I think I'd put him above Marshall Falk. Maybe yeah. in B. Would you put him in B or in C? I want to say B. That dude looks like a B. tank. Yeah. So now when we look, I think the biggest thing is is that looking at S. I think we can move Walter Payton up to S, and we have four four guys in S. We have Walter Payton, Adrian Peterson, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith is the all-time ru- rushing leader. Barry Sanders was on his pace to do that, but also retired early. Adrian Peterson set numerous records, almost breaking the single-season rushing record held by Eric Dickerson. Basically should have broke it, but had injuries, and Walter Payton was the most elusive running back of all time. Where would you rank these four? I think Barry Sanders should be the top top because he 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 wasn't injuries or anything else. It was because Detroit is a shit organization. You can't Detroit can't have shit. Yeah, and also they Emmett Smith, Alvin Jones, Emmett Smith also ran behind the Great Wall of Dallas for a long time, the and also had Dallas. Yeah, I mean, so um, I think. <laughs> It wasn't, I, they weren't the comic squad that weren't, the, no, there wasn't the comic squad. Do you think Adrian Peterson's better than Walter Payton? That's the tough I th- one. I think That's I have to put Walter tough. above Adrian Peterson because of rings. I try not to go into rings just because it could be a lot. But it determines your greatness in a way. It's not the most important thing, but it does help. It depends on how it's done. Like if Walter Payton, if, not Walter Payton, if he won the, if he basically was the MVP to win the Super Bowl, yes. But the Bears fans are judging you right now. But like, <laughs> who else was the Bears' offense going with? And this who was, was a quarterback, Bear. Vince Mc, McMahon. Yeah. McMahon, yeah. Yeah. That was Walter Payton. Fuck, yeah. Actually, no, I forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, so I think this is a good list. Fuck. Well, well we just did it. There you go. Best running backs of all time. And with that, I think that is our show. Our weekly podcast wrapping up week seven, going into week eight. Thank you so much for joining and listening in or watching in. Hope you had a lot of fun. Please subscribe to any of our platforms hopefully you enjoy the podcast or the videos um and make sure to ask us questions that way we can answer them instead of doing this stuff because once we get to linemen i'll start tearing people's hairs out um regardless <laughs> for me for Macedon, for mamba I want to thank you all for joining i've been your host live city have fun enjoy football and run the damn ball we'll see you next week